Manage our currencies and naira stability in such a way that in 16 years they had lost only about 111 naira to one dollar. But then came Buhari, the Bukaneer, and the most vicious criminal. If 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 Tinibu was not part of Buhari's game, any other person would have jailed Buhari and every other person under Buhari because that is the truth. Buhari came in for the first time, and if you look at the history of Nigeria, our PMS consumption. From 20, 20, 20, 20, 1999 to 2009, it was about 28 million barrels per day, million liters per day, and which corresponds with the records at the U.S. Energy Administrative Office. In fact, the first time our PMS moved from 28 million liters a day to for what under the Ziani, and that was when they did that Ponzi scheme that the House of Rep broke. And they discovered out of the 47 million that the Zani claimed, only about 29 million came in. The rest were opposing scheme. EFCC went after those guys, and most of them are still refunding money. Kachuku Ibe came in and he wanted to bring a reform. Kachuku did his own research and discovered that we were only consuming about 28 to 32 million liters a day. Of course, that was not in tandem with the criminal regime that Buhari was running. They didn't like the reform he was bringing, and they removed him and brought Mike Antibaru. Under Mike Antibaru, all of a sudden, our daily consumption moved from 29 million liters a day to 66, then 72, then to 78, then to 90, then to even more than 2 million liters a day. Before our very eyes, our, our output came down from 2.4 million barrels a day to 1 million barrels a day to less than now. They were stealing massively. I've never seen any government that stole like the Buhari government in the history of Africa. And they did this. It was easy for Obasanjo and Jonathan to be able to manage our forex stability because they had excess crude oil revenue more than import. Now, let me tell you, I want us to see, see let nobody be deceived about the abracata that they are doing. Buhari came and Buhari wrecked Nigeria. When Jonathan left power in 2015, he left external debt of $10 billion and, for, and the total debt of $12 billion, $12 trillion. Naira. Buhari left $43 billion for Obas uh, Tinibu and then 77 trillion naira in terms of total debts. Now, let me tell you guys what is happening here and why nobody should be deceived by the games they are playing. For us and under Jonathan and under Basanjo, we had foreign diaspora remittances. Under Buhari, Nigeria had total imports. Import volume of $451 billion. Total export of about $406 billion. Nigeria borrowed $32 billion SS. Nigeria had $20 billion reserve on in Cuba under, under, under Buhari. Nigeria had over $168 billion diaspora remittances. Net net, Nigeria had excess of $184 billion under Buhari. If we were to follow the normal economic principles, Naira to a dollar should be saying that about $177, 179 to $1. But under Buhari, they, were, they, they, they don't only steal the meat, they stole the pot, they stole the stove, they stole the gas, they stole everything. Now, look at what is happening today. Nigeria has external debt of $43 billion. Nigeria has total debt of about $87 trillion now. Now, crude oil output today is 1.4 million barrels a day. The Tinubu government has never done anything to remove the, the, the yoke that was upon that industry to bring output to about 2.5 billion million barrels a day. They are not looking at the issues. They are only treating the symptoms. Now, what they've done over the last four months, for those who want to know, first of all, they tried to stay for enterprises in Nigeria. They raised NPR to 24, 22%. And then move to 24.75%. Basically, what they are trying to do is to attract hot money, the FPIs, foreign portfolio investors. And for those of you who do not understand, foreign portfolio investors are like sharks. Wherever sharks see trace of blood, they will trace the blood for the meat and they will eat it. For those of you who do not understand, in places like Japan, their monetary policy rate is about 0.01%. A hedge fund manager in Japan can decide to borrow money at 1%. Then 
you can borrow two billion dollars because of the what we have provided for them in Nigeria. They will use that money to buy T bills and the bonds that the federal government has issued from the to the CPN. For those of you who don't understand, treasury bills are debt instruments that the CPN is used on behalf of the federal government of Nigeria to borrow money. What Yemi Kadoso have done over the last three months is to issue bills. First of all, they raised the, um, the, the cash reserve requirement of banks to 45%. They raised liquidity ratio to 30%. In fact, what's, what that simply like, if, for example, now you have 100 naira in the banking industry as deposit, 45% Central cash reserve requirement, it cannot be loaned out. Yesterday, they came up with another idea loan, loan to the post notion about 50%. That means if you have 100 naira in the account, only what will go out as loan is 50%, which is bad. Dash now, basically, what he has done is that, and which is also good because he's trying to see what he can do to stabilize one other factor by issuing treasury bills at the rate at which they are doing it. If you look at what they've done from January 1st till now, till March 27th, they issued that treasury bills worth about 5.6 trillion naira. That's about $4.2 billion. Out of those $4.2 billion, foreign portfolio investors subscribe to about $3 billion at a yield of 21%, effective yield. What it simply means is that by this time next year, those foreign portfolio investors will come back and say, Yemi Kadoso, yes. And they took they they bought they brought in their monies at the rate of 1466 naira average um rate of um bringing them into Nigeria. And at the current level of the natural dollar, those guys if they're exiting next year, they will be taking out about 4.6, 4.7 billion dollars out of Nigeria. Now, when we when you hear about foreign reserve, let nobody deceive you. What are the components of foreign reserve? Foreign reserve of Nigeria are boosted by inflows from exports. Our major export is the crude oil, which accounts for 90% of our foreign exchange earnings. The next line is foreign portfolio investors. Who comes in is, of course, that one is lending. The next line is foreign direct investment. The next line is foreign diaspora remittances. Foreign diaspora remittances under the PDP, Obasanjo and Jonathan was about $20, $25 billion. Today, they are less than $3 billion. Nigeria, sir, of course, no, there's no reasonable person that will bring money to Nigeria if he's very wise. I know of a friend who, who brought in 20 million, 20,000 pounds. He changed it to Naira to invest in mutual fund. By the time he took back his money back to the UK, it was worth 8,000 pounds. He lost 12,000 pounds to forest volatility. I know of another guy that borrowed $10,000 in Canada to buy a car and ship it to Nigeria, thinking he will make profit. A year after, by the time he took back his money, the money was less than $3,000. I'm sorry, am I the only one who his voice is keeping on his end? No, I, I can hear him properly. Correctly. Saddam. Okay, I think it's just... Ensis, can you hear me? Uh, okay, I think Ensis, I've been... Um... I'm here. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mr. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, sir. Well, I can hear you very there well. Was... Okay, then I have to go out and come back. I'm sorry. It's keeping on my end. Okay. So, so basically, the guy brought in, the guy borrowed $10,000 and bought cars and shipped to Nigeria. By the time he sold his car a year after and returned the money back, he lost almost about $7,000 because of forex volatility. And the guy swore he would never bring in a, cup, a cent to Nigeria. So basically what the CBN governor is doing, of course, is to buy us time. Our major foreign exchange earning is the crude oil. And the crude oil has tanked from 2.5 million barrels a day to about 1.4 million barrels a day. And why is this so? Because of the massive tiffering, the mass of inefficiencies under the APC's government. We thought that PDP were criminals, but we discovered that the PDP were kindergarten when it comes to criminality in seeing of things just compared to the APC. Now, Yemi Kadoso is boring to defend an era. Over the last three, four months, they've taken, don't let anybody deceive you. You know, I, I, I listened to him um, talking to some group of, they were asking him. He said, "Oh, 
um, that he never depleted the reserve. See, <laughs> you don't talk to kids. You know, this, 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 the people he's talking to, when Bloomberg reported that we are born $2.1 billion, the Fed Nera, they are not foolish. You know, the problem we have in Nigeria, especially the Ronu bandits and the ignorant idiots that who try to as much as possible, is that they, they are very ignorant. Let me tell you what happens here. For the past four months, we have had turnover of about $17 billion in the FX market. The question we should be asking, out of this turnover of $17 billion, how much came in as inflows and how much were the outflows? And what were the source of the inflows and the first source of the outflows? Basically, what happened, over the last three months, four months, we have taken about $4 billion, $3 billion FPIs. In the next three months, we will take more. Now, by the end of this year, as we enter first quarter of 2025, and the people that lent us this money, because when you borrow, when you take dollar into the system, the CBN will keep the dollar into the account and release Naira. In every balance sheet, there are two sides, the credit side and the debit side. When you borrow dollar to sort out the issues, there is going to be an outflow when it matures. The difference between what happened under Obasanjo and Jota was we had excess dollar inflow, not from borrowings. Obasanjo actually did the best thing for Jonathan and Yadua. Obasanjo cleared out all our external debt. Obasanjo set out a reserve that was for $7 billion. So it was very easy for Yadua and Jonathan to cruise. But uh, uh, um, 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 Tinibu inherited $43 billion external, external debt that he will have to service and pay. And SS26 trillion naira domestic debt and 23 trillion naira through way and miss, which has even accrued about seven trillion naira, naira interest rates. And these guys are not playing. Let me tell you, as long as the crude oil output is not up to 2.5 million barrels a day, and from what they are doing, they are not even serious about it. As long as the insecurity in Nigeria persists, farmers cannot go to their farm to produce things. Nigerians cannot sleep with their eyes closed. Somebody asked this question: How come dollar came down from one thousand nine hundred to one thousand one hundred, yet food inflation got up to forty percent? The question is very simple. We are not even producing thirty percent of the food commodities that we were producing in twenty fifteen, because in twenty fifteen twenty forty we never had the kind of insecurity in every part of Nigeria. Insecurity was resulted then under Jonathan. To the northeast and north central part of north central but today every part of Nigeria is being ravaged if you go to farm they will kidnap and they will behead you it has become a cultural it has become a business of in fact the kidnapping and this equity business is actually the biggest economy in nigeria and the government is doing nothing about it so anybody telling you and deceiving you and telling oh even if naira falls today to 500 naira to one dollar don't be deceived Uh, was that just me or we, lo we lost him? He probably just had a call. We'll give him a minute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Quiet, sir. Good. If you borrow $20 billion or $10 over the last over the next one year, over the next one year to prop up the Naira, when the obligation matures, where will you get a dollar to repay? When the major source of oil revenue, the crude oil, dollar revenue, the crude oil, is not present enough to even take care of our domestic needs. We usually import over $11 billion worth of agri and food commodities when Nigeria was producing food. Today, most of us are not going to their farms. How are you going to provide alternative food source in Nigeria? See, guys, Anybody who has a dollar resources should hold it closely to his chest. Don't let yourself be deceived. There is no fundamentals. You know, Yemi Kadusa cannot come out openly to come and say, Oh, Mr. President, governors, take care of the physical side. He's a boy to the man in charge. He cannot come out openly. But if if I can hear his breathing and everything. The man wish those on the physical side would do their own bit. He has done it. He has played all the magic he can play. Mark it somewhere and mark it clearly. 
if Nigeria does not ramp up crude oil output within the next one month to 2.5 million barrels a day, if Nigeria does not in any form and manner put in place the right, the structural and security architecture of Nigeria to rein in the activities of the bandits, the kidnappers, the unknown government, the Fulham militia, the every part of matter of security Nigeria within the next two months. If we do not curb the criminality of the public sector officials, you saw what it, what happened with Yaya Bello. You see, you know, this APC guys think that we are idiots. Yaya Bello does not have immunity. Even the old criminal that is put, the old 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 governor that is protecting him. Who is the commander in chief, Mr. President? The police attaches, the DSS attaches to the current governor and the Yayabelo. Are there because the Inspector General of Police and the DG of DSS allow them to be? President calls Bichi or calls the IJ say, withdraw all the VIP security men attached to this guy. In 24 hours, EFC will pick him up. What they are playing here is just Nollywood, deceiving the average Nigerian. They took Bobriski and Jade Bobriski within one month. They took Pascal Okechuku and they tried him. These are guys, what were the offense? They sprayed the Naira that they end legitimately. But here is a man that is accused of stealing 82 billion Naira. The man even went to Aso Rock to even grant interview. I was there in this equipment. In fact, that would have been where the presidents, if they are serious, were handing him over to the FCC. You know, it was the twin demons ravaging Nigeria is insecurity and corruption. And I do not see the goodwill, the political will, the strength, the ability of this government to slay these insecurities and to slay corruption. And that is where the problem is. And I bear to submit the only way we can save the naira there's no there's no country that does not defend their currency in vietnam the vietnamese dong to the dollar is about 24 thousand vietnamese dong to one dollar they deliberately divide their currency because it will help them to compete competitively in export the vietnamese 100 million people 330,000 square meter a uh, kilometer land they produce and export $265 billion worth of goods and commodities every year. Mexico, 130 million people. Last year, the, last year they surpassed China as the biggest exporters into the US, $476 billion. In fact, they had diaspora remittance of about $56 billion and foreign direct investment of about $6 billion. In fact, total export of um, Mexico last year was $635 billion. The Mexican peso, in less than one year, has gained 20% over the dollar. Singapore, 720 square miles, as small as any Moshe local government in Lagos State. Last year, they imported over $720 billion worth of things. They even imported sand. But yet, over the last 44 years, the Singaporean dollar had been very consistent, gaining over the US dollar because they are a very productive economy. Where, where do we even, even South Africa, 60 million people, last year, they exported over $125 billion worth of goods and commodities. Nigeria has capacity to produce and export over two, three seventy five billion billion worth of goods and commodities. We have resilient population. We have hardworking citizens who are suffering under the yoke of APC. But what has been hindering us is one of the greatest evil on mankind. The presence of the plague called APC and PDP. Let nobody deceive you. PDP and so you saw what happened in Abuja. There is no sane, there is, there's no sane nation where a wiki will be allowed to come into a PDP. If wiki was in South Africa, but now they will have, in fact, they wouldn't even allow him to come into that hall. But you saw what happened. And that is the level of, you know, when I say PDP, APC are one, they are two fingers of a leprous, one leprous hand. So basically, these guys are not tackling the real issues. They are busy pussyfooting. The only way we can fix sustainable price stability, forex stability, is to do two, three things. Ramp up oil output, 2.5 billion million barrels a day. Now, have you done about that? Ask yourself. Under Buhari, Nigeria squandered 16 trillion naira.
34 billion dollars in subsidy and federal and maintenance program and the fires are not working nigeria lost 22 billion dollars every year on crude oil thefts and inefficiencies for five consecutive years president common sense requires that when you inherit a criminal team and you say you want to renew the hope it's to sack everybody you have to sack in fact you even have to clean even to the kitchen they go and check from the petroleum ministry to the nmpc to the, the nndpra most of the criminals and the and the inefficient clowns that were part of the buhari buhari last any we are retained of course the man said he was going to continue for where but and we are seeing it clearly and that is why till today i have never seen anywhere in the whole in 2010 we are producing 2.5 million barrels a day 2011 we are doing 2.6 million barrels crude and condensate all of a sudden, we went down less. Now, ask yourself this question. In the 21st century, if Nigeria has crude oil reserve about 7 billion barriers, and from report research report, we can actually ramp up our reserve to about 45 billion barriers a day. Now, ask yourself this question. Under the EPC, the thing came down from 2.4 million barriers a day to one, less than 1 million barriers. Under the Tinubu regime, this is almost about, I mean, almost one year. We are still struggling with, in fact, in, two, in February, they said they did one point. OPEC said it's a lie. They only saw 1.3. Now, have you put that as a fair? If these guys are serious, you know, most of the Ronu criminals who are, do not even, if they are right thinking and they are reasonable, what they should have been asking is, Oga, you are our principal. How come you inherited bandits on that board and you kept them? What are they doing for you? How come under the criminal Jonathan? Remember that one Jonathan was even doing 2.5, 2.5 from there. Even um, Oshi Banjo even said, even in the midst of that 2.5 million barrels a day, that Jonathan was stealing 400,000 barrels a day. Which actually simply means that Jonathan was doing 2.9 million barrels a day and was stealing 400,000 based on their own narrative. So, how come the same people who accuse Jonathan of stealing 400,000 million bar 400, barrels a day? When it was reported to cannot even do up to 2.5 or 2.9 million. That's the question that just will be asking. But we are busy deceiving our let me tell you guys. From what I have seen and from the honest progress, when they've been attacking Bloomberg. See, let me tell you, if they see you only defend with what you have. What they are simply like a man who is broke, who is borrowing money to buy school uniform for his children. To take them on a holiday to Disneyland. The man does not have anywhere to pay that debt. When the debtors come, they will carry him, they will carry his children. So, as long as I am concerned and anybody who is well informed, there is no fundamentals supporting what they are doing. What we are sitting on now is on a keg of gunpowder. Yemi has done his own. He has, he has, he has, he's like the Dibia. He has exhausted all the tricks in his book. He will keep on boring. That's the only source. Foreign diaspora emitters are not coming in. There's nobody who is sane out there who is laboring as a doctor, as an engineer, that will bring his daughter out to come and exchange it. He must be a madman. There is nobody out there who is a foreign direct investor. That will bring in foreign direct investment and in economy that the dollar to naira exchange it works like a seesaw, like the storm in the Atlantic Ocean. There is nobody who is very sane that will bet on an economy. The only people who are bet on are foreign put and they are putting for are gamblers. They are like bet Niger put on the forest market and they are, they are hedging them, so they are doing swaps. And the next one year they will exit. They refuse to tackle the fundamentals. They refuse, refuse to tackle corruption. Of course, Bezebub cannot cast out Bezebub. All you see them do with Yabelo is just optics. Yabelo is not one of is not the only criminal. 99% of those in APC and PDP are criminals. Yabelo is just like an optics. They don't use them to do only with divorce. Number two, they have refused to tackle the insecurity. We have suggested to them ways in which they can fix the insecurity. The current security architecture of Nigeria is criminally complicit in the battle in Nigeria. 
hundred billion. Nigeria squandered twenty-seven billion dollars to fight insecurity. Insecurity was only in the Middle Belt and Northeast when Buhari became president. After wasting twenty-seven billion dollars, equity is never part of. If I'm in my village now, I cannot go back to my my country home. They bought my country home, bought my factory, bought factory trucks that I deliberately set up to employ use in my village. My age to seventy-four year old mother every year used to do about six hectares of farmland. I normally mobilize him to employ use to farmland for him. For the past two years, my mom had been in Abuja. Six hectares, and there are many people like that who have. So anybody telling you, oh, you know, you know, I feel so sorry for these criminals, this ignorant. That's a price. How will price come down when nobody's causing anything? It's manipulation. It's ponzi game. Is Yahoo Yahoo? What they are trying doing to Nigeria is like what Ovoiza and Chim Mark did to those Ponzi scheme, just like what um, uh, Madoff. They wouldn't call Yemego. So if they want to fix Nigeria, they don't know what to do. We've told them to fix the insecurity. We have to unbundle the current security action of Nigeria. In 1966, the regions had peculiar security arrangement that protected themselves against external aggression. You can enter Rimobo, you could enter Rimobo in the night and drive all the way to can nobody will kidnap you, nobody will molest you. We suggested to them simple remedy. Every community knows the good, the bad, and the ugly. They know the criminals within them. They know the honest people. They know the honest people. In my village, if a stranger enters my village, within 30 seconds, we will spot him out. We have 8,809 electoral wars in Nigeria. Tinibu, when he was campaigning, was saying he will recruit 50 million youths into the army, feed them with Agbado and Cassava and the Ewa. Mr. President does not need to employ 50 million youths. Very simple. In every electoral ward, ask the community, not, not the criminal but APC politicians or PD politicians, ask the community to donate their own sons. Every community knows those who are into drugs, who are criminals. The, the communities, the traditional rulers, the ASS, the clergy. They will select hundred of their youths. If you pick hundred youths from every eleven, you will have about eight hundred and eighty thousand youths. Take them to the military camp, train them as military men, empower them, get innocent and nod to produce armored personnel carriers at average cost of about three thousand dollars. Let them produce truck-mounted machine guns for them. Give them drones. Give them AK for seven, AK forty nine. Post them back to that. I come from a, 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 a local government known as Okigwe. We have eleven wards, and you have about one thousand one. If you have one thousand one hundred, one thousand one hundred use in Okigwe local government area with four or more personnel carriers and the truck mounted machine guns, in one day, they will clear every of the fuller militias and criminals in our bushes, and it will apply to the same thing in every electoral ward in Nigeria. Post them back. And when you post them to their communities, they will pro provide protection to agro clusters of about 1,000 hectares. If you watch Netherlands, Netherlands has only 2 million hectares of land that is arable. They have 880,000 tractors. They have over 300,000 greenhouses. Netherlands produces and export about $120 billion worth of agro commodities annually. Nigeria can triple that. If these guys are sincere, the 15 trillion naira they wanted to go and waste, given to Jagori to go and loot, doing 700 um, kilometer coastal, coastal road project, and inflated almost about 1,000%, can be used to execute. In fact, half of it to execute this. When you have 8,000 8, 8, uh, 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 military rangers in their communities, they will protect 1,000 hectares of agro parks, industrialized. Mechanized agro parks in their electoral wards. That will give us 10 million hectares of fresh agro land that will be processed in Nigeria. In one year, Nigeria will produce enough food to make our import of food zero. Nigeria yeah. will produce enough agro commodities that will enable us to export $100 billion per annum. Nigeria will provide 24 7 security that will destroy unknown gunmen, all these ESN criminals everywhere, um, full of bandits will be destroyed. Six months, Peter B did it. Under Peter, when Peter became governor of Anambra, in Anambra, if you ask anybody, if you go to Anisha, the criminals that we are so brilliant, if you are carrying a poutine bag, they suspect it is, but they won't even come and ask you, give me, they will cut off your hand and take the poutine bag away. What did Peter do? 
Peter saw the madness that was left behind for him by the PDP or from Bad Nuja and the rest of them. Peter went to the 177 Autonomous Committee and asked them, give me your sons who you can trust. Each of them donated 30 to 50 of their sons. Peter went to Innocent, give me 177 trucks to cover the 177 Autonomous Communities. Peter went to the yard and said, train these guys, let the police and me train them. They trained them and gave them Shakabula. They didn't even get the AK-47. Peter asked the communities to get their, their roads. Peter went to Yadua, give me army to clear the evil forest. We are kidnapped like Evan, we are staying. And Yadua obliged him. In six months, Peter chased away all the bandits in the Nambra state. If your house was used to house kidnapped victims, Peter got his transmit to pass a law, it will be raised down. If your forest is used as a camp for bandits, you will lose that land. Every community co 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 contributed and they were committed to protecting themselves. In six months, they chased away Evans and Evans came to first start Lagos to establish his capital of his business. For five years, Anambra was voted the most secure state in Nigeria by the IGP. Peter was not the commander in chief. But Peter commonsensically knew that communities in the security is indigenous. If you involve the people to put themselves, they will protect themselves. And this is what the APC, they are busy deceiving themselves. To that day, they said uh, 22 people were kidnapped from Zanfara. They, have been, they didn't pay ransom. Why were they kidnapped in the first instance? I was privileged to speak to the PDP governor for me in 2019. And I told them what they can do through the agro value chain to create 120,000 agro rangers motorized with full arms that can help them. See, let me tell you, these guys are all complicit because as long as Nigeria is in chaos, as long as there is insecurity, Nobody will question them as they look the fact, the jack and the IGR. They know that in a society that is very decent, in a society where people are educated and literate, in a society where there is security, where people can sit down and reason very, very well, their reign of terror will end. And they don't want that chaos to end. And that is where we are, where we are today. Yeah. There are no reasonable government in Nigeria anywhere. They don't have any reasonable government at any level and tiers of governance. So guys, I know I have taken, I've taken time to lay this foundation and I want people to ask questions. Let me tell you, anybody who is expecting that there's a paradise, if we don't restructure Nigeria today back to the 1963 constitutional, physical, resource production and control framework, guys, as of today, we have 133 more dimensional point. Agenda. As of today, we have 197 million point. Agenda. Let me tell you, the World Bank threshold for poverty is $64.50. If you're on this, if you're listening to me and your salary is less than it's faster than a month, you're poor. And I can tell you, NDIC did their research. Out of the 117 million bank accounts in Nigeria, only 0.6% has 500,000 that deposit in it. Most Nigerians are poor, and the worst thing is the poor that you will see everywhere attacking and abusing P2B. Those he came to rescue, those I, I'm not surprised. Jesus Christ came to the earth to rescue the, the poor and the criminals and the, 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 the depraved and the humanized when they wanted to crucify him. The same, the same poor idiots that he wanted to save were the people that were asking for the condemned criminal Barabbas over him. The same thing that happened to him is happening in Nigeria. So when you see, let me tell you, of a truth, there are very few of us in Nigeria who are actually honest and sane and who are actually scrupulous. A majority of us in Nigeria, I'm sorry to use this word, are criminally minded. They're only waiting for their time and by their time to become more criminal than the madness in power are yet in all right. <laughs> oh my God. I wanted to thank you very much, Mr. Nemeka. I mean, I wanted to introduce oh, well, you. Oh, well, I know clap for this talk. This mock. This I wanted, right. to, ah! I wanted to clap you. Every... <laughs> thank, thank you very much, Mr. Nemeka. That was, that was, that was very, I mean, I, I'm, please, you probably be around for some time right? because. I was already telling Sarah that ah, this one hour where you give us, the one hour I don't finish. No, but, but thank you. I, I like the fact that you covered a lot of ground. But me, I just have one question. I'll ask one question, but I'm, I'm sure NC wants to engage you. So let me give us this time to uh, prepare. Uh, my own question is very simple, really. And it's about because in your introduction, I heard you say something relating to you know being in the um oil marketing business or Betisha in the oil business. Are they still paying for a subsidy? 
Saddam, as of today, let me tell you of the truth. I want to be very practical. So those of you who, who can do the numbers, a metric ton of gasoline, which is the PMS, the last time I checked one hour ago, was selling for about $911 plus $11 premium. And now that eleven dollars plus eleven dollar premium is nine hundred and twenty dollars, multiplied by the current exchange of one thousand two hundred at the official market, is one one million one hundred six thousand four hundred divided by one three four one liters in a metric ton. The FOB price of PMS of Sholome is eight twenty five naira per liter. Saddam, so how much do you buy fuel in the fuel, at the fuel station? Please, uh, please, uh, please, if you can be breaking these technologies for us, you know this is not the economics class. We have to be that. Okay, uh, okay, economy, okay, know? okay. Yeah. Saddam, a liter of the PMS. FOB, FOB, what is FOB? Uh, FOB, free on board. Free on board. Is the is the price? You know, you know. Let me give it. You know, the, the people that sell product to us in Nigeria. They normally come with what we call mother vessel. The mother vessel come with large cargo of PMS. And they normally anchor offshore labor. They don't come near Nigeria water because of criminality pirates in Nigeria. So they expect marketers to use their vessel or any piece with solar water to go and pick the product from offshore labor into Nigerian waters. Anyway, to call the long semantics, to land a liter of the PMS in Nigeria, which is gasoline. It's about a thousand naira. By selling it at the fuel station at six, six ten six hundred, we are subsidizing. In fact, Nigeria pays six hundred million six hundred billion to one trillion naira every month on fuel subsidy. They are paying subsidy. Let nobody. That, that is why they refuse to privatize the NMPs. Let me tell you something that will shock you guys. The Petrobras, the Brazilian Oil Corporation, was incorporated. 1970, years after the Nigerian National Oil Corporation, which later became NNPC in 1977. Brazilian oil reserve is about 15.5 billion barrels, which is less than Nigerian oil reserve of $37 billion. What did the Brazilian government do? The same thing Aramco did. You know, when you see criminals in government, they will never do anything right or transparent. The Brazilian government discovered that corruption in the profession was killing them. They divested. The only share the Brazilian government owns in Petrobras is about 28.5%. They sold down their shareholdings to private investors for the sake of accountability, and they listed it on the floor of the Brazilian Stock Exchange. As I'm talking to you, Petrobras' total assets is about $174 billion. Last year, they did revenue of $121 billion and profit of about $6 billion. NMPC that is older than Petrobras. Total assets are about $60 billion. Of course, they, they, fact, as I'm talking to you now, they, I'm even hearing that they are owing about $3 billion to those that they that supply them PMS. NMPC is a conduit pipe. It's a sleaze fund avenue for most political office holders from that night now. We don't, they know what to do. You see, today, if Nigeria wants to do the right thing, the federal government of Nigeria, if they want to be honest and sincere, can do what we call offer for sale and IPO, just like Petrobras, just like Aramco. Offer for sale simply means divest 60% of their holding in MPC, and which will give Nigeria $35 billion cash into our account, and then IPO of $20 billion, which will give us $55 billion. If you bring in such efficiency and transparency, why are we thanking investors are leaving Nigeria because of the criminality they are in the industry? If you do it this way, every year Nigeria can attract about $30 billion new investment in that industry. Have you bothered to ask you, how come the Nigerian liquefied natural gas, only public corporation that pays us $1 billion, $2 billion, is 51% owned by private investors and 49% by NNPC. Therefore, they are shielded from all manner of NNPC, um, House of Rep, Senate, and Presidency criminal inquest. The private investor will not allow such rubbish to happen. They know what to do. 
but they will never privatize an npc they will never divest they will never open up the system because if they open up the system nigerians will benefit yeah. but as long as the system remains opaque their criminality will continue nigeria is paying subsidy all right. Nigeria is not supposed to pay subsidy. The refines are not working. Remember, they told us refining will work November. It never worked. December, it never worked. January, it never worked. March, it never worked. April, it is not going to work. And there is no working in sight. And yet, people are keeping their job. Shame. Hmm. Ensis, so Ensis, are you there? Or, or you are still observing shock? Okay, if if I see it's not there, um, I'll just go to some of the speakers of current. Yeah, here now. I'm here. I know you are there. I can see you now. Oh, I really love baby. That's what you do. What you what you want to talk? You don't do your truth. You are talking and we could just hear. Go ahead and ask me your question. Okay. Um. Please. Uh. Let me. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Depending where you're speaking from. Uh. So I want to thank everyone. So please. Um. Let me just go straight to the question. I. You know, uh, for some time now, I've been following you and, um, you know, it's just so <laughs> mind-boggling, you know, your level of intelligence and how much you quote. So short after Peter Bina, I don't think there's another person that would, you know, predict this more than you. And my fear, my fear is this, that most anytime you see any very, anybody that is very intelligent in Nigeria, there is a way the political class, you know, rub that, rub that person in and make nonsense of him. A case study is people like, somebody like Buala. Buala is a very intelligent person, but you see, they've made him a psychopath. So, uh, uh, you know, my fear, my fear about you, because you're, you're, you're the kind of person who have to look up to, somebody who can learn from, somebody who should be um, an inspiration to a whole lot of us, especially now that we are fighting for a new Nigeria. So please, I'm just asking, are you going to be steadfast? Are you going to be steadfast to this course or tomorrow now we hear Bros, 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 I've had offers three times to be part of this rubbish. Okay, because I, I refuse. Let, let, let me let me finish. Let me finish. I I I listened to um your I think it was on Facebook, the one you did from your house, and that some things you said, you said, Oh, Tinubu is doing some you know, Tinubu is trying he inherited bad uh, bad debt and Tinubu brought this debt. He Tinubu campaigned, went around and told us that what is the best thing that happened since sliced bread. Everything Buhari did, Tinobu is, you know, a big part of it. And when people say that Tinobu is doing his best, Tinobu ruled Lagos for 24 years. Lagos had everything. Tinobu never turned it to El Dorado. So I don't see anything Tinobu is doing that is going to affect Nigeria. But my biggest, my question, please, I hope, I hope you are like you are an inspiration. I, in short, I, 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 I wither the level of your intelligence. Please, please, I'm asking, are they not going to? Make you a psychopath, bros. My name is Nemeka Onyeka Oderiri. By the special grace of God, I am 51 years old. I have lived here long enough, and I've been involved in the process in Nigeria. And I want this is a recorded space. I have been offered three times to be part of. See, let me tell you. When people say, "Oh, when you want to die with the devil, use long spoon," it's a foolish man that dies with the devil with a long spoon. He will draw you close and he will destroy you. I say to them, take the advice and run with it. There's nothing anybody can do to draw me in to be part of the world. It's not possible. And to tell you a story about myself, I, I grew up under a father. Go and ask about my late man, my father. When he died, he said, the truth has died. My father believed I was his father reincarnated. And I, I'm not the first, I'm not even the second child, but my father, the always kind man. My father was a UK trained accountant. On a salary of one hundred and sixteen naira a month, he was offered a bribe of five thousand naira before my very eyes. Nine year, I was nine years old then. Brand new five four four. The man refused to compromise, and they sacked him. See, bros, just let us not blow our trumpet. You know, I said to people who care to listen, those who will tell your stories or who knows you, are your wife, your children, your employers, your employees, your subordinates, your friends. Take our time to ask about this man. There's nothing any devil can offer me that will compromise me. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. All right. Mr. Thank you, America. sir. Thank you very much, Reza Vabes, for that uh, for that question. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm quickly going to come to um, uh, Maurice. But before, okay, before I go to Maurice, just to draw our attention, everybody, if you look at the Jumbotron, so tomorrow um, the Parallel Facts guys are going to be having um, um, GROV 
on space. So I first of all, I think you all should retweet, repost that um, tweet, but make yourself available tomorrow. There's a lot that I personally am looking forward to that space. There's a lot I'm sure we will be able to hear from Jarovi. Uh, Maurice, please go ahead. After which we'll come to um, uh, sorry, one yeah. minute before Maurice goes. I, I, there is something you said about um, getting youth from different local government. I don't think that thing will work because when he said that, that was before election. Hmm? He said that before election, and uh, then we didn't know the amount of mad people we have in that country. We didn't know the amount of uh, mad youth. Crazy youths, people that support criminals, people that support uh, drug barons. So you can imagine after the election, we saw the madness that happened during the election, and we saw the madness that happened during the um, tribunal. We saw all that. It's one thing to go through the election and see all the maiming, the killing, and everything, and you still kept supporting them. But the total destruction of the constitution of Nigeria during, during the tribunal was out of play. But still, some mad people are still supporting these people. They are still um, they are still defending them. And by the time you go to every local government to hire these people to get our definition of best youth in different local government is different from their own definition. Our definition of best youth in my area is different from the ones in different APC local government areas. They have mad people around. So my point is, you talked about AK-47, AK-49. It's like handing over firearms to a set of mad people. I don't think that is actually going to work. I don't think... Um, I no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Let, me, let, me, let me explain to you. Uh, I... You see, I qualified it. I said, you see, I, I'll give you an example. I come from a community. I, I talk from practical sense of it. I come from a community, Amagui Hube, or Kigwe, local in the most state. In my community, my community is actually one of the headquarters of the criminal or non government. My country home was burnt down. A factory that we spent 98 million dollars to build to employ use were destroyed. Our group pack that had war as we were destroyed. Factory trucks we are burnt, and that is a lot of insecurity. And I tell you of the truth: eighty-five percent of my people are not happy with what is happening, but they are helpless because the less than 20, 50 bandits have AK forty-seven, and you don't challenge a madman with a gun. Our people know the truth. In my community, we have we know ourselves. There's no community that does not know this. Let me tell you: if you come into a community. Nigerians are not actually terrible people. What basically the political people have done is to dehumanize Nigerians, deprive them of education, paparize them so that they can throw chickens to them. Just the Stalin principle. They feather a bed and then throw corn, corn to him and the bed will follow you. The Agbado principle. That is, Stalin is actually was not saying this Agbado principle. What we are simply saying is this. If you come to my committee and ask us to give you hundred of our youths who are very stainless, who are honest, who are sincere, we will do it. I am not saying that APC will be the one that will say. I said, I qualified it. Let the community select 100 of their sons, the words who they know are honest, are sincere, are not criminals, are not drug addicts. Train them, put them back. Lawful terror, the task on lawful terror. Let me tell you, where I come from, we know the good boys. If you train the good boys and hand them over good equipment in one week, let me tell you, there was an incident that happened in my village. They said one day the youths were angry, they woke up and they started, they started attacking those criminals. Why were they attacking them? Because most of us stayed away from the community. And the good youths were saying, because of the activities of the bandits, the good men are not coming back and they are, not, they are suffering. But when we come back home, we celebrate them, we create jobs and everything. So the good youths rose up. With nothing. Of course, after they attacked the youth, they went after them night by night to decimate them. If you have in every community, in every ward, 100 youth fully armed, bros, let me tell you the truth. 
in less than p to p is it what manambra ask anybody from manambra state p to p did it and it worked it will always work there is something about a community every community. i think i i i understand what you yes mean. i understand mm -hmm. but my what i'm saying is your definition of good is different from the definition of um, other people's good i want i want us to pay attention to what happened during this last election they've created a monster that is actually destroying that country. The amount of bigotry we've seen over the uh, social media is just, uh, it's its alarming. So, I mean, you can imagine there are some APC people out there on social media talking about going after a set of people just to, you know, get rid of them, just to kill them. You have a Yoruba person saying he's married to an evil woman and the moment they declare them uh, 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 non-existent, he will kill his wife first. I'm talking about something more serious than before. It's, it's different. This election opened a lot of things. We, we are looking at a different angle of um, making use of uh, our youth in our, you know, in, in our community to do a good thing, which is a very brilliant idea. It worked during Pitobi's time. The amount of bigotry flowing around our country is not as much as what we have right now. In our own sense, we, we know our definition of good people. But see, my Southwest people, I'm, I'm a Yoruba man, I'm speaking. My Southwest people, I know the kind of hatred flowing in that region right now. So handing gun over to them, I don't think it's a good idea. But I mean, it's just a very small um, angle. Yeah. I just no, don't pay more no, attention. I understand your fear, my brother. But what I'm simply saying is this. The Southwest is also not spread of insecurity. You saw what happened in Owo, the Owo massacre. If that Owo community had their own sons fully equipped and armed, you know, Amato Kun is not equipped, it's not properly equipped. That Owo massacre wouldn't have happened. I am clear, see, I, have, I clearly understand what you're saying. There are a lot of mad people out there, but the communities, what we are saying, that's right. Every community knows the good, the bad, and all that. And let me tell you, okay, so what happened in, in, in Kaduna? We have bandits walked into a school, kidnapped one and eight children, and walked away. Close your eyes and imagine if that local government had 1,100 fully armed soldiers. They are sons. They had four armored personnel carriers, motorized machine guns. There's no way those bad. No, there's no man, no matter how insane, that will allow you to walk into his home. He has equal arm to kidnap his wife, to rape his wife and his children. It's not possible. Let us think about that. It yeah. He has worked in Nigeria. It will always work again. Yeah. But, but with the, with the, sorry, okay. for one with the madness that happened with this uh, Yoruba nation people over the weekend, let's, let's pay close attention to okay. that. I don't want us to go back on mm. this, but uh, let's. Yeah, yeah. Now. Thank you very much. Go back thank you very much, Jimmy, for that engagement. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Namika, I think I pretty much understand what you're saying. More like localized uh, security and protection, which is good. All right, let me go to uh, Mr. Morris. Mr. Morris, please go ahead. All right, um, thank you very much. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, you can. Okay, so um, I want to welcome um, Mr. Obiri. I mean, all what he has said. Just stick to the bank that is very, 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 very accurate. You know, he is somebody that, you know, I've known for a long time. We do business together, running into hundreds of billions, and he's as straight as an arrow, you know. So, all what he's saying about people offering him appointments in government is very, very true. I mean, his wife, Badamuche, tells me all these things about, you know. So, they, they, they try to lure him, but if you are straight, you are straight, you know. And I really commend him for that. So I also want to talk about um, food inflation. I mean, um, I'm in the agri sector. Anything that concerns rice, I know it 110%. Now, our problem, okay, rice has different value chains. I mean, there's farming, there's milling, there's, you know, um, sending the rice to the wholesaler or the distributor. And the biggest problem right now is insecurity. That's our biggest problem problem right now insecurity nobody says it nobody talks about it because it's been normalized i mean so a rice paddy a, a 50 kg rice paddy you know is thirty five thousand naira that's the going rate for a rice paddy 50 kg bag thirty five thousand naira you know and there are there are chains and i mean there are value chains where 
you get that rice paddy. I'm just using that as, a, as an example. I mean, rice paddies are weighed in 100 kgs um, and so, but I'm just using um, um, 50 kg as an example because rice is usually 50 kg when you mill it and it's processed. So when you take that rice paddy, which is 35,000 naira, you know, you have to take it to the rice mill. Now, cost of fall is very expensive. I mean, fall last year is not the, the same amount of fall right now. I won't carry the rice paddy on my head to rice mill. You have to transport it to the rice mill. Now, that is extra cost of about four or 5,000 per bag. I'm just using per bag to, to simplify it as much as possible. Then, from, for, then in the rice mill, we use fall to run a rice mill. It's not my saliva or my urine. I used to run the rice mill. It's full, you know? So that is extra cost again. Now, when you are done with that rice um, being milled and it's ready and it's prepared, you have to take that rice to the dis distributor. It's extra cost again because full is very expensive. So when you see ABC people doing propaganda on the time that rice is now has come down to 40,000, 50,000, I just laugh. How much is rice party itself? So I've said, the day we have a good, responsible government, they know what and what to do exactly. They know what to do that will make rice fall to even as low as 30,000 naira a bag. It's possible in this country. It's very, very, very possible. But what instead, we're using 15 trillion naira to build road from Lagos to Calabar or, 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 or wherever because that road is to compensate somebody. But if you use that money, even one-tenth, one-fifth, or sorry, one tenth or one hundred of that money to ensure that farmers are safe in the farm, ensure that four, I don't know what they're doing with four price. If four price can come down to even, well, I don't know what what will happen, if, but if four price can come down, price of rice can get to even 30,000 naira a bag. It's possible. Minimum wage is 30,000. A poor man in this country cannot eat rice. And that's the truth. No matter how, and you see these people that don't um, have the means to afford rice, they come on the timeline, they insult, they abuse. And I'm saying, look, most of us here can afford to eat rice every single day if we choose to eat rice. We speak out to protect you guys, to tell you that you can have a land filled with food and prosperity. People are, not, people are hungry. Go on, shoot. People are hungry. People cannot eat. So for me, I just think, you know, this issue of food inflation can be tackled if government is very, very sincere. 15 trillion naira for road is not our priority right now. We need, to, we need to feed this country. We need to ensure prosperity for all Nigerians. And it's possible. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, Maurice. I mean, I, I like your, your analysis really pretty much because um, the, the milling rate for rice right? It's somewhere around 68 kg of rice. So if you mill 100 kg of rice paddy, you get about 68 kg of rice. That's if you have, you have a very efficient meal. So it doesn't even make any sense. Yes, correct. correct. It doesn't even make any sense. Let me that. Yeah. Uh, Momo, see, see, let me tell you. you see, when I see uh, Momo just summarized, let me tell you something. In you know, OKB State, it's a rice belt. KB has 41,000 square kilometers of land, which is 4.1 million hectares. Now, KB, Benue, Kasena, a bony state, can actually produce two times what we consume. Nigeria consumes about 7.5 million tons of rice every year. We wasted one trillion dollars in cyber intervention, and we can only do about 3.8 million tons. It's a more, more important an issue which nobody has looked at. If we arise something you can cultivate twice in a year under irrigated arrangement. If we decide today in KB State between KB and Bedoue and Ebony to do one million hectares of rice today using the Geri species in, in from Egypt, we will produce 14 million tons of uh, paddy rice. That will give us at your, at your rate of 68 70 percent enough rice that will cover Nigerian consumption plus 80 percent export, and it will not take us anything more than 1.2 billion dollars to do this. 
will provide security for the cluster. In every cluster of 100 hectares, fully irrigated, provide 20 military men to protect it. But we are dealing with monsters who do not care about all these things. So, um, um, we write the number. Momo is right. Under this arrangement, we will sell a bag of rice, 50 kg for Tata Naira, and those at the farm gate will make a profit of 949 billion Naira annually. But these criminals do not care. Please let me just ask you. don't want to uh, Mr. Obiari, there was a time rice, one bag was being sold for 8,000 Naira. Is it that the rice? Eight five, yes. It does eight five. 15. So please, when people are saying 30,000 Naira, is it that it can never go down to 8,000 Naira, please? You can't, you can't, of course, you can't. You can't. Yes, it can. It can. It's so I said it depends on fall. So fall of now and then, it yeah. can get back to that level. You know, we have more farms. Okay, let, let me even bust your head. Lagos, that is here. Lagos, we have lake rice, right? They have yes. a nice, good meal. They don't have paddy. They don't. They have, don't. There's no rice. They don't have paddy. They, they don't have any paddy because there's no rice. So that's why rice is so expensive. So if we can get those, I mean. Good farms because there's there's farm. My mine is in Benue State. There are there are good places in Kebi in Benue. If you can protect farmers, it's possible. It's possible. But you know nobody's thinking, and it always upsets me when obedience are the ones that are thinking for these people. We are always thinking for them. Nobody's thinking there, or maybe they know, but it's not a priority. So it confuses me at times. A whole Lagos state, Lagos, doesn't have rice paddy. I'm like, what's going on? So Lagos has a, a, an arrangement to Kebi State, but it's not working. It's not wa working. So what's going on? Eh? Hmm. Quite unfortunate. Mary White, let's have, if you're on speaker section, you probably want to chime into the conversation. Maybe it might be better for you to raise your hand so we can, uh, so I, I'll know you want to speak and not just call you randomly. Mary White, go ahead. Hi everyone. Um, one minute. Can you hear me? I'm hearing you as if you are speaking from local Ja and I'm in Abuja. <laughs> okay, my brother. Um, hi, Mr. Meridina Mecca. It's really, really nice hearing your voice. I've been enjoying um today's topic and you talking. So my question to you is, um, I've been listening to you, and we all know that Nigerian's economy is solely based on crude oil, and like you just said today. It's been, uh, we're not keeping up with production. It's been depleted consistently from, I guess, during this whole APC governance. So, and I could also remember that on this space specifically last year, August, which was my graduation, we held a space on natural resources. And I guess, uh, which kind of showcased Nigerians' vast mineral resources across the whole nation. And which actually we all know led to a creation of a new um, department that is being headed by one of the APC goons. So my question is, do you think that this mineral resources can be used to diversify Nigerian's economy, especially when it comes to things like lithium? If Nigeria was to use was to diversify its economy by actually using its mineral resources would it help with what is going on now and other question is too would are they actually making use of these natural resources right now to help grow our economy that's my i don't know if what i'm the question i asked makes sense but that's what my question is. thank you sir okay, okay. Let, let, let me answer you straightforward nigeria like i said it's a country that can produce and export nothing less than $275 billion worth of goods and services annually. But we are being hindered by the criminal and fraudulent 19 constitutional and fiscal framework that was handed over by Abdul Abaka and his band of bandits. 1996, Nigeria had a fiscal arrangement that allowed the states and the constitutional units to control, the regions to control 50% of what they produce. Pay taxes to the central port and 20 to the federal government. And of course, the exclusive list there was just limited to external security and foreign, foreign affairs and all those stuff. We need to go back to that foundation that helped us. I will give you an example. Not many people are aware that Nigeria is a very, very gold, lithium lead rich country. Every one of us have they have fixated on the issue of the crude oil. 
Nigeria is not even a good oil rich country. Nigeria is actually more of a gas rich country than even fossil fuel rich country. Now, if we are to go back to that constitutional framework that works for us between that system, let me tell you what will happen. Zamfara, Ocean, Kasina, Gombe, they have rich gold reserve that are being stolen by bandits and the elites. In fact, the insecurity in the Northwest is actually linked to gold mining and gold scavenging. If Nigeria decide today that we are going to are, are go back to the physical arrangements that allow the states or the government to control whatever they produce, I bet my finger the people of Zamfara will rally around and say, hey, guys, you cannot sell our gold. They will set up an agreement, let them to process their gold, sell it, and then bring 20% to the central government and that the center. Basically, what we have here is that we have a lot of our resources being stolen by a few privileged elites, because we have a criminal and fraudulent coercion of fiscal arrangement that allowed banditry and elitist criminality all the way. Even Nigeria is the only place where you have people being allocated acreage of land to go and drill oil. In Saudi Arabia, you don't allocate oil fuels to anybody. If you want to enjoy oil wealth, go and invest in Aramco. That was why Aramco went public. Aramco today has a lot of investors from Goldman Sachs. If you want to enjoy all your work, go there and invest in Aramco. And that is what we have asked the federal government to do. Unbundle the physical arrangement. And interestingly, Bola Sinibu had been at the forefront from 1999. He was one who was screaming for a sovereign national conference. He was screaming for fiscal federalism. He was the first governor to create local government areas in the first of Basanjo. Now he's the commander in chief. He wields power and control governors. And how come the same Bolasinibu is not marching forward to ensure that Nigeria is restructured back to the Awolowo era that he has always espoused? You see him wearing Awolowo cap and Awolowo uh, eyeglasses, but he does not believe in Awolowo's ideal. If Bolasinibu had believed in everything as priest, I would have expected him. The only renewed hope and Marshall plan Tinibu would have pursued will have been to restructure Nigeria back to the United States constitutional framework to enable Nigeria to become a... You know, I share... If you go to my Facebook page or my Twitter page, you will see a picture that I shared about 1,000 granite pyramids in 1964. Go and check out the records of the colonial masters and you see the kind of wealth the North had using agriculture. The North itself is actually... Let me tell you, when we talk about the North... It's actually in the south in terms of natural endowments. The north is the only place in the whole wide world where honey, Bible called a lamb. When Bible talks about lamb, we, we make our honey. The honey is the date palm. Northern Nigeria is the only place in the whole wide world where the date fruits twice in a year. Northern Nigeria can actually create about $15 billion date wealth in the next five years if they want. But the problem is, Everybody is fixated with the oil that flows from the Nile Delta. Nobody wants fifteen I, billion dollars. You said right? 50, I said, watch me anywhere. Fifteen billion I, let, dollars. Let, 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 let me let me break be? let me break it down to you. A hectare of the date palm yields about ten tons of date fruits. A ton of date fruits is about a thousand two seventy dollars. Go and check it. Google it. The North is the only place in the whole wide world where the date fruits twice in a year. Saudi Arabia in 2006 decided to use the date to curb the notification. From 2016 now, Saudi Arabia has built a date plantation that gives them $2 billion every year. Google and cross, verify this and, and, and cross check it. I was privileged to speak to the PDP. I told them, I said, the 19 Northern states, if they decide today, to create 50,000 hectares only, clusters of 100 hectares each. First, let me tell you what will happen. It will help them to create 10,000 dairy centers where the nomadic herdsmen can collocate their cows. The cow dogs will provide organic fertilizer. And in fact, any place where you have 1,000 cows, you can get about 20 megawatts of power. Go ahead.
Bluetooth dis- Bluetooth connected. Ideas have been shared. I have written proposals to KB state government. They have said on their own request, not my request, to, to plan to state government. And I told them, I said, I will help them to raise the funding. I will help them to set up the structure. I'm not taking cover from them. It's my patriotic duty to help liberate the Talakawas in the north. But this, let me tell you, even in the southeast, I may feel it that is when he was governor, created a two billion naira fund for palm oil in the southeast and south south. None of the governors ever have sat to discuss it. In 1965, Nigeria was controlling 45 percent of the global crude palm oil market. Today, that market is about 72 billion dollar size. Control it's represented by Indonesia and Malaysia. I came up with a proposal. Diaspora, missions, community, private, public, partnership arrangement that will allow the South-South and the Southeast governments to create about 280,000 hectares of the palm plant. If you go and check Wema, Wema Group is in Calabar and they are in Aquaibom. Wema Group turnover every year is $78 billion. Wema has about 214,000 km, uh, um, square, um, 14, uh, 214,000 hectares of palm plant. Wema makes $73 billion every year from palm oil. I gave them how working with the community, how they can set the same 280 kilos that can give them the same revenue. $73 billion. South, South, and Southeast, 11 states, the governors do not care. See, see, guys, eh, I look at this country and, you know, I have, I, 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 I have not lost hope. God can always do it. In a, but beyond God doing it, God cannot come down from heaven and do it when people are not willing to do the right things. We have the most dense, the most wicked, the most ignorant brainwashed masses. You know, I give it to the obedience. The obedience are the only community where you see people who isn't accurately. Outside the obedience, Nigeria is gone. Forget it. Mm. Um, <laughs> people, let's see if we go the pressure for this space today. Because I... All this kind of you know, you know, uh, you know when 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 we come out on this page that we say most things that we were our privilege to know, and we come out and we are screaming and we are shouting. It's like, can you hear me? I mean, wife, wife, so let me talk to you. Oh, okay, I can't hear him, but I can hear you. You know, it what feels about? like um, it feels like we are we are crazy. We are, we don't, we, we don't, we, now, now we like Nigeria pass. You know, when you see, if, if, if he has not done efforts now, if this uh, Mr. Inemeka has not done efforts to reach out to state governors across the country, you heard him say he has sent proposals to Plato State, to Kirby State, I don't know how many states he has sent to. And these people have done nothing because for them, a liberated uh, populace is a danger to them. Emias, but let, let me tell you, in that proposal, I told them, I said, keep your fuck. Keep the, uh, Emia, I, 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 you know, Peter will always say, verify. let me tell you. You know, I told you I'm an oil trader. I met, I met a group from Glencore. Glencore is one of the biggest oil traders. They are one of the biggest oil traders into Nigeria. I met with their head of African market. The guy told me something that shocked me. The guy, of course, the guy said he read, he, he, I oh know this guy's the money, when you're partner with them, they monitor you. The guy said he read my tweet where I was talking about cash shoe and the palm oil value chain. The guy told me something that shocked me. The guy said, you know, this cash shoe nuts. The guy said that they buy the cash shoe shell, the cash shoe shell that we waste in Nigeria. They buy even palm kernel shells. The guy told me that if I can give him 200,000 tons of palm kernel shell, he will buy it at $110 per ton. The the cashew shell, the cashew shells, you buy it at $220 per ton. The guy now says something that shocked me. The guy said that sometimes you sit down and you wonder the kind of cost that's upon Nigeria. They have a, a, a lead refining plant in Poland that does about 128,000 tons of lead refinery. Lead is what we used to produce battery, apart from little. A Pony State, Kogi State, Cross River State. They are deep lead mines. They have deep lead mines. Nobody is talking about bringing lead and exporting it and processing it in Nigeria. So, and we had a very deep discussion. 
You see, this this I'm not saying. I said the guy said to me, if as I'm talking to you now in Abia State, I will give you an example now. Alex Otis government has been very very supportive. In Abia State now we are creating cluster. We are doing 30 hectares of cocoa plantation in every electoral ward in Abia State. 184. We are doing 30 hectares of palm plantation. Alex is very supportive. We are doing greenhouses about 5,000 greenhouses. And you know, he appointed mayors who are very smart guys. They are not like the criminal local government chairman. Some of the mayors, like the guy in Omaha, are not Victor Ikeji, the guy from Ohafia. You know, most of you don't, don't, don't even know Bordex. Bordex was one of the guys that did Toraya Telephone. He's a very wealthy billionaire. Those are the people that he met mayors, and these guys are committed to build them. So we are, we are, you know, we have a governor who is willing to it. See, let me tell you, in Abia State, you know, when it is budget of 485 billion, people are saying how he's going to fund it. Mark it and keep it on record. Abia will build an economy that will be bigger than Lagos State in the next 10 years. If we have a governor like Ellis Oti, eight years and somebody that will take after him. And that is the power of vision, that's part of leadership. The north of Nigeria is the richest region in Nigeria. I sat down with them. I said, you see, you see, it's not a state governor. He was going to borrow $1.1 billion. You know what he wants to do? He wants to do pack, a trailer pack, a trailer pack for $3 million. When I have a group from Turkey, where they are doing a, a, a trailer pack around Alamoe, these guys, are, if, if the governor of Naya State wants private investors that will do trailer pack for him, under PPP, I will bring in investors that will do the trailer park without him putting a cover. But you know why they will not do it? He will borrow that for $3 million. He will inflate the contract times four, and they will cream out. That is what they after. That is why they want to do 700 kilometer coastal railway at 15 trillion naira. When there is a, 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 a $4.8 billion project that will take road from Cairo all the way to Joburg. You know, the kind of criminal politicians we have in Nigeria is mind-boggling. See, the truth is in this country. You know, the, what pains me most is that we have, when you see a poor man who cannot even feed himself, playing Ronu, doing it, no, religious imperialism, it breaks my heart. Those who are so vested in it, no, religious nonsense are the poor. And the, see, for some of us, God knows that even if Naira sells for 20 thousand Naira to one dollar, some of us will survive. But, you know, I feel so pained in my spirit when I see a country so blessed by God. A country that's supposed to be among the top five economies in the whole world, tottering in the brink of poverty, decision, and death. Because we have the most wicked, the most... You see, you know, you see, if, if we are asking them, okay, invest your fuck and jack and your eye jack, you know, I would say, Keep your fuck, keep your jack, keep your idea. Just allow us to guide you and to help you. They don't want it. It breaks my heart. Okay, look at for example. Mr. Now. Mr. See, look, look, look for example now. I the just, minister, I the just confirmed your um I confirmed your claim now about um Saudi Arabia and the dates. Saudi is actually the second highest um producer of dates, and they can only do it once a year. Only once a year, Egypt once. is the highest. Once. Egypt is the highest, and out of 38 countries that export date, Nigeria is nowhere to be found. Out of 38, Nigeria is nowhere to be found. Egypt is number one, Saudi is number two, Iran number three, Algeria, Iraq, Pakistan, Sudan. China is even there. Number 12 is China, and Nigeria is nowhere to be found. And Nigeria is the only place you claim can produce it twice a year. See, are you are you aware that in 1965, Google it, Nigeria was controlling 45 percent of the global crude palm oil supply market. We simply means if we had maintained that trajectory, we'll be doing about that eight billion dollar annually, and it's not late. See, let me tell you, I I I see, I I work. You know, there's something I, I, in life when you build trust, people trust you. When in 2006, I decided to set up the Southeast Farms, I met my former employers. I'm, I tell you, my mates, the first male bank MD in Nigeria, Mrs. Elizabeth, the Google her. She's the first male stockbroker in Nigeria. She was the MD of JP Morgan Chase in 1993. I, I begged them, I said, let us go and develop Southeast. They contributed their money, 325 million naira. I went to the Southeast to, you know, to grow, you know. They, 
what was the palm? What was the palm value chain? Let me tell you. In the south, I give you some. In south east, we have two thousand two point eight million hectares of land. We have one thousand two hundred voice electoral wards. I told, I told the governor, I said you don't need to bring money. In every electoral ward, in my own community, I surveyed, I helped them survey their land with one of my friends. My community had about one six eight hectares of land surveyed, fallow land. I said, governors, every community, let them bring fifty hectares of land. Let them help them to clear it. We will supply them with another palm plantation species. We will, you're not bringing money. I have a group I'm working with. We will set up factories in every local government area to plant the palm. In five years, there's no community in the Southeast that will not earn about 200 million naira from the palm plantations. The land belongs to governors. They have the CFO, they have the Land Use Act. They will, put, I, but I told them, I gave them one condition. You have to, Pass the anti open grazing law and then part the community to influence it and enforce it that they full of militias will not destroy their farm. As I'm talking to you, five years after the governors have not done it. If the governors had done their part, they are not bringing cover. I have a group of investors, diasporans, technical people from Malaysia who are willing to invest. If they had done what they were supposed to do when I spoke with them, by now from the south, we have been doing about 13 to 15 billion dollars annually. So we have the most hopeless, the most criminal. I was spending my money doing the do jingle, begging them. They won't do it. We have, see, this country is caused by one cause, the cause of wicked political bandits. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Berry. Honestly speaking, honestly speaking, if you just if you just stay here and you man, I've just I don't know the emotions, but I believe the emotions are. Uh, it's general across this room. Right? It's an emotion of how did we get here? It is crazy. But let's allow people re uh, respond. Let people ask questions because people want to ask questions. And honestly, I think we have we must have a second episode of this piece. We should have a second episode of this piece. Yeah. I think when this goes viral, we will have a second one. You see, come back here. It's it's just been mind boggling what I've been listening to here. But let's when we're this back to you, let's let's yeah ask yeah yeah. Um, Kai, okay. we need to have. In fact, somebody uh, suggested in the comment section that we need to have a space dedicated to food security. Well, these are these are very great conversations, and, and I'm hoping we'll do that soon. All right, uh, let me go. Let me go to. Let me. Sorry, I took my wife. My wife, trying to see your picture. I just want to ask a quick question. Uh, it was one of the questions I asked. I don't think he answered it, and I'll just you could drop me, um, Mr. Berry. Uh, so the question to, to you again is, you see how we can track the revenues that we do get from crude oil. Is there any way we can track the revenues that we get from all these natural resources? That's if Nigeria is even doing it, to see if it's feasible. That's actually the question. Thank you. My sister, as of today, based on the reports of Melekiare, NNPC, GMD, Google it. Nigeria lose $1.9 billion worth of crude oil every month to tifery and inefficiency. And it has been happening for the last 25 years, uh, for the last five years. In 2019, the Auditor General Revolution appointed by Buhari told the whole world that 107 million barriers of crude oil, what about $10.3 billion, could not be accounted for. See, let me tell you, there is something I've just found out. You see, the records are there. We were doing 2.5 million barrels in 2015, and 2013, 2012, 2011. We were doing 2.3 million barrels, 2.4 million when Jonathan hired about to Buhari. My sister, what we have, you know, when P2B says crude oil is not like sweet, that you can just take and put. And let me tell you, to steal crude oil is not something me and you can do. To steal a barrel of crude oil is something that takes people at the highest level. Nigeria is being ruled by bandits. It's not people don't even you see most Nigerians are not even seeing it clearly. We are being ruled by thieves in the majority. There is no record. The, the, the only record we have on record, you can Google it, is that we are losing 1.9 million billion worth of crude oil every month, and nothing is being done about it. Nobody's being sacked. Nobody's being prosecuted. Nobody's being jailed. It's bazaar free for all. 
And that is the truth. And it's heartbreaking. I'm powerless. You are powerless. I am no president. I'm no governor. I don't have political power. But God knows if I'm Mr. President, it will not happen. Yeah. Ms. Sender, my, my yeah. question was regarding no, no, mineral right. resources. I already got the answer to your question. Is that he is saying you can't even track oil that everybody is following? So how can you even track the one that people don't even know? <laughs> exactly. I think that's the answer. Like you know, you can't track. Thank you, thank you, oil. thank you for that. <laughs> um, quickly, let me go straight to Mr. Gosling. Then I'll come to Mommy. We never talk for this place. Mr. Gosling, please quickly. Hey, good day, uh, Mr. Nemeka. We are here. Sorry, we missed you in the last uh, Monday finance conference in Houston, but we'll talk behind the scene and reschedule something again for another big uh, finance conference with some board of directors here in, in the United States um, so that you can come and speak about some of the strategies, global strategies. Anyway, my here in the US and of course all over the world, we know that um, more business is the life engine, is the economic lifeblood of uh, any nation's economy. Can you talk a little bit about the state of the small business SME, as we call it in Nigeria, at the small business industry in Nigeria, and looking at a situation where most of the manufacturing and industrial sectors, they depend on a vibrant uh, midstream that can supply, that can supply them natural gas to power their huge prime movers and engines and, and uh, factory engines and all that. But we haven't been able to implement the midstream sector in Nigeria, except what is happening right now in Apia State. God bless uh, Governor T with the geometric electric power plant, which is going to now unleash a vibrant manufacturing and industrial sector as they begin to power those plants all across uh, Apia State. So why is it that we haven't explored the midstream gas pipeline that would power our industrial sectors all across the country? Why is it taking forever for us to implement that? Thank you. My brother, the same issue of leadership. You clearly stated Nigeria is an, a gas rich country, over 206 trillion standard cubic feet of gas, not be utilized. You know, what people don't understand that basically what we are tapping upon now is non acetic gases. We've not even looked at the non acetic gases reserve that we have in Nigeria. Now, you talked about Abia State, beyond even what geometric is doing. Let me tell you what we are trying to do in Abia State. You know, I mentioned to you about the clusters we are doing in Abia State, in every of the electoral wars, in every local government areas. I was privileged to speak to a Chinese. The one of the things that led me into Agri in 2016 was my discussion I had with one of the Chinese, um, um, one of the guys in the Chinese embassy. The guy told me the Chinese globally consume about $64 billion worth of pork. In West Africa, they consume about three billion dollars. In fact, it was true in that because the Chinese in in, in Niger and South Chad are in larger number than the Chinese in Nigeria. They consume about three billion dollars worth of pork, mostly from Brazil. And the guy opened my eyes up. Do you know that if you have a pig farm of about one thousand pigs, you can generate about five megawatts of power from biodigesting of the animal poo poo. And most people are not even aware that bioenergy is actually cheaper than even gas energy at 55 um uh, at 0 0.5 cents per kilowatt hour so basically beyond what geometric is doing in Iber state we are also going to be building clusters where we have our greenhouses where we have our agro parks we have a degree farm of about 1000 um 900 sowers and the 100 boas but of course, we are starting with close to about 100. Is what we are. I'm telling you what we're already doing. We are. If some people in a, a bad are already coming, calling us to come and do it there. Basically, we will build. It's going to be biodigested. We generate methane to power the turbine, and then do the organic fertilizer that we never lost produce our foods organically without using the synthetic um, fertilizer that is NPK that is very cancerous. Now the question is, why are we not doing what we're supposed to do? Why are we not utilizing the gas? value chain and also to generate power and that is where we have the problem now have you bothered to ask yourself the nigeria electricity regulatory corporation just came up out of the blues jacked up tariff they call it band a 225 megawatt i live in manala in lagos we are even being charged 277 naira per kilowatt hour those bipolar gas have added their own 52 naira per kilowatt hour on top of 225 from the code disco 
Now, how did they even arrive at that two two five? It's a question you should ask yourself. To generate power using gas is fifty uh, zero point five cents. It's about fifty five naira per kilowatt hour. Using hydro is about fifty naira per kilowatt hour. Using um, bio energy is about the same fifty naira per kilowatt hour. Now, by the time you add the cost of distribution, the cost of transmission, it cannot. It will come basically about hundred to one ten. So. In the real sense of it, if we have to be very transparent, how did we come to 225 when we should be talking about 150, 175? What Nigeria and ERC simply did was to enable the criminals, the, the uh, corporate bandits who wants to be on. I, I say it, quote me anywhere. Any ERC is actually doing the bid of the corporate band. I'm not talking about corporate bandits who want to be on the FOB list. They want to remain on the FOB list without giving us any light. And that is where we are. So for us to fix that, we need to unbundle the power sector in Nigeria. Nigeria is the only place where we have a national that always falling down. We have, National Assembly has done extra mile by trying to unbundle electricity. But we must unbundle the transmission grid. We must unbundle generation. We must unbundle distribution further. i give you an example. In my community, all the power assets from the meters, to the post, to the um, transformers, we are bought by my community. But the federal government sold it to a good, a good disco in Tastate by a And they get, they are not giving us power. My community have not seen power for the past 11 years. No single power. Now, why are we still allowing these discos to continue the way they are going? G uh, Jonathan in 2013 sold assets worth about 3.2 trillion naira for 403 billion naira to some of his colleagues who like taking kind of financial capacity to midwife and exploit it. We need to unbundle the assets. Yeah. If I, as an individual, can generate an example in my company, I should do it without recourse to interstate. If we don't do this, we waste our time. Yeah. Th thank you very much, Mr. Nemeka. So, um, um, Mr. Nemeka, so we have like so many people that want to and I'll maybe give you a chip in something or ask you questions, predominantly ask questions. So maybe what you can do for us is, uh, because it's very difficult to stop you, because everything you are seeing is always important. And so it's, it's so difficult. So maybe uh, within your mind, you can just, the one that is in our Nigerian English, the one that is important, you can, yeah. you can stick with us. Thank you very much. Okay. A lot. In fact, we need to abode what you said with this space a lot. I don't know how we're going to do that. But quickly, I'm going to go straight to Mommy B. Then after which, I know A have been here. For, uh, for some time, so but I, I think he's using the computer, so maybe that's why I can't read his hand. We'll, we'll come to EE, then Abdul Rahim, and so on. Uh, good evening from my side. Um, let me go quickly to it. I mean, one is my question, the other one somebody asked in my DM, so I, and as both are around the same subject, I thought I might as well ask them together, right? So, a few days ago, I, I, I made a post saying that. After you know the, the you know we know they're defending the naira, which has the reason why we have seen um, the exchange rate um, come down a bit. And I, my question at the time, um, um, yeah, it was tongue in cheek, but you know there was some seriousness to it. Is so when they finish our foreign reserves, which I, I understand is dwindling by the minute, right? Where 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 the, where are we left at? Right. And also um, the, the question that was asked by the person in the DM is, who are the speculators? So it's from Golara Wulisi. He said, who are the speculators? We often hear CBN and others accused of the manipulation in the foreign exchange rates market. OK, let, 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 let me go. The first question is, when we have exhausted our reserve, where do we go next? Nowhere. We we'll wait for Nigeria to, the Naira to reverse. Number two, who are the speculators? Speculation happens in an economy when there is lack of trust in the government of the day. Have you bothered to ask yourself how come the whole world trusts the dollar more than any other currency? You know, I there was a time Nigeria toyed with the idea of doing yuan win to Naira. And there was this Chinese partner that I discussed with, and I wanted to pay him in yuan. He told me that I should not try it. I should pay him in dollar. And I asked him why. He said because the American state and institution 
has a way of regulating itself that nobody can wake up some one morning to devalue the dollar, that they trust the Americans more than their own government. The only faith the whole world has in the American dollar is because there is that faith in this zone of the state that no one president can wake up one morning to manipulate the system. Donald Trump or Joe Biden cannot wake up just like what MFLA was doing under Buhari to begin to print dollar to hand over to Trump or Biden. The Federal Reserve chairman would never do that. He would rather die than to do it. There's the independence of the of the state, such a way that America is protected by the strong institution of the state. So basically, we are where we are because we don't have strong institutions. Now, the question is, after we have finished, you know, we defended, no, and like I said again, every currency is being defended by, the, the, the yuan is deliberately devalued because China is a productive economy and they want to make their export cheap. The Vietnamese dong is grossly devalued because they want to make their export cheap. Nigeria is struggling to devalue our currency. We don't export, we don't export anything. It's foolishness. Now, the only thing we export, which is the crude oil, that we are doing 2.5 million barrels a day. We can't even do up to 1.5 million barrels. Is it not foolishness? You are borrowing money. Let me tell you, you borrow to defend. If you're if you're using your asset to defend, it's like a man who says, okay, I want to defend my currency. You go and sell your car. You sell your house. You sell your land. It's your money. You cannot, I cannot borrow money from Saddam and Momo to be defending my currency when I don't even have money to defend. That's foolishness. Let me tell you. When Yemi Kadoso is done with his magic, and I, I, I give it, I will tell you this. I feel sorry for him. If I'm in his position, I will do the same thing. But as long as the physical managers are not stopping insecurity, are not stopping corruption, are not ramping up oil output to where it was in 2011, yep. by this time next year, Nigeria will bleed. Yep. Mark it somewhere in your diary. Hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Obiari. Um, Barista AA, are you, are you there? Yeah, well, meaning I'm here. Yeah, okay, please go ahead, then we'll come to Abdurrahim. Yeah, I mean, mine is not um, not long contribution. I just wanted to welcome Nemeka and to let you guys know that um, whatever he's saying, he knows what he's saying. Nemeka is not there speaking, so you could know who... who was my man. <laughs> so I just want you guys to know that um, I actually I'm, I feel proud. I actually went to investing with him, and he's been that that sharp as a tack from from time. But anyway, yes, everything he has said here, I agree. The point, the problem with Nigeria is that Nigeria is actually not a country. Nigeria is like a criminal enterprise. That is the truth. And, um. <laughs> Long term, if we want to recover the country, we need to throw away the 1999 constitution. That, wow. that constitution, see, if, 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 if you were given an assignment to design something that wouldn't work, so you, you, were, you, had an assi you were given an assignment, produce a document that wouldn't work. Trust me, what you will come out with would actually function better than the 1999 constitution. It is just nonsense from a um, you know, fiscal federalism point of view. But in the short term, um, the only way I think that we can manage the situation that we have is when we have good leaders, then added with a bit of intellectual um, uh, inter industriousness. The problem with Nigeria is there isn't a lot of intellectual, there's so much intellectual laziness. Um, our people don't want to think. The people who are there, they, they've not come to, to um, uh, solve things. For example, we've been talking about security, right? So Nemeka has been talking about um, engaging the local people and all that. But how do we do it? If we need to do it on a national scale, which would help? We would need a legal framework, and that is why they are, they are talking about, you know, constitution and all that. But the point is, do we really need to to um, uh, review the constitution before we can reject the Nigerian um, uh, um, security architecture? I don't think so. For example, we've been arguing this this thing about state police every day. We talk about state police. Should we have state police? And people are saying 
we need to review the constitution so that we can put it in the constitution. But I've been thinking, the police act as it is, the law that established the Nigerian police, well, the constitution established the Nigerian police, but there is a law that regulates the Nigerian police, which is the police act. Do we, we, actually, we, we actually do not need to go and review the constitution to be able to create state police. Because um, the constitution says, that there can only be one police for the, the whole federation. So there, could be a, there shouldn't be another, federa- um, uh, another police. But what if we National Assembly makes a law, for example, and creates a state trust of the Nigerian police? So there could be a Nigerian police legal state trust, which, you know, under that law, then it can be, it can be, and um, we create a, a police funded by Lagos state government, in, but it's the Nigerian police, but holding a trust for le, local Lagos state government only. Just like as we have the mobile police, which is a branch of the police, we can have state trusts of the police and then create it in such a way that the states and the local people, or maybe a, a, a police commission in a state can manage it. So this is the kind of, intellectual um, um, creativity that we need to inject into governance in Nigeria. We don't have things like that. All they do in Nigeria is all about, so Nigeria is just like, um, you know, there's something they call the rentier state where people just come to just seek rent. And these people, they have no plans to develop Nigeria. They have no plans. All they are thinking of, the reason why all these beautiful proposals I think Nemeka has been talking about. The reason they have not done any of them is they are thinking of lead time because some of these things would take about three, four years, you know, to produce results, but they want immediate gain, right? Mm -hmm. So that is why someone gets into office 29th May and then by now he has issued a contract to do a road project that's going to, going to cost about 3% of our GDP. Because they say it's about 15 billion, right? Yeah. Yes. And then after that, the project has been um, uh, awarded. We are now beginning to discuss, you know, businesses that could be removed. So is it that they didn't do any environmental and social impact assessment before the project was given? And Nigerians are not talking about it. 1.1 trillion, 1.06 trillion already paid for the first phase of the project, which is only about 40 something kilometers in Lagos. This is a country with 20 million out of school children, 133 million multi dimensionally poor. So, what if we invested those projects, for example, that those monies in education or even in, in, in energy? Someone was talking about electricity and um, gas. Look, Nigeria is about the seventh largest producer of gas in this world, right? Yeah. Yes. But we don't have gas. As Nemeka talked about, what we're actually using in Nigeria is talking about is associated gas because when you produce crude oil, some level of gas associates it. That's called associated gas. Yeah. But we also have the natural gas. We are not talking about it because we don't have infrastructure. We, exactly. You know? Yeah. And, and the problem in the in the energy world, there is something they say in the oil and gas world that if you produce or if, if you make if you're making a discovery, you know, you explore for oil and gas. So if you discover oil, you're lucky. But yeah. All right. Um, um say, hey, please, I'll just have to cut you short right now because we have many people that want to ask um Mr. Berry questions and Sadam, I- Sadam. I will have asked you. I will have asked you permission to allow him. This guy is. I, a, he's, he's also. I, I think no. I, I was thinking of him having him on a special date because. Yes, Sadam, will, please. You know, I, I arrange a special session for him. I, this guy is one of the best brains in gas, oil and gas business yeah, in the whole world. I know him very well. Uh, exactly. I think. I think. I think we we'll have a special date for him because yeah. people that want to have. Yeah, him, please. Have, uh, okay. If, okay. If, okay. If, but, yeah. but anyway, the point, uh, Sadam. Thank you very much. I'm just going to. Run. Thank you, sir. Thank you. But I think the point that we are making is that um, if Nigeria needs to progress long term, we need to go back to you know a purely federal constitution 
in yes. the past, but in the short term, two things, visionary leadership, people who can rise up to the challenges of personal example. As actually, yeah. And I see that, and that's the reason I support Peter Obi. Because it will be, it will be always referential. He will tell you, I've done it. He can, yeah, challenge of personal example. If, yeah, if we have any someone like him, then a bit of intellectual, you know, creativity in designing policies, right? Yeah, he can begin mm. to make progress. I think that yeah. is, um, thank you. Point. And that is why I want yeah. to encourage the obedient movement for what we are doing. Um, I'm in this movement and I, I go nowhere even though I've, I I struggle to find time to do it but I'll continue to do it all right thank you for the country thank you so much all right thank you very much Baisa. I think like Saddam said we, we need to have you as well one of the yeah but it's uh, please I don't know let's check your next week Thursday next week Thursday you're free, you're free. please keep out time for us mm -hmm. so we can have you next week Thursday also it will be it will be so I think to engage yeah. the intelligent mind the, yeah, the only problem, the problem Saddam be saying they call me barista. No, and I know be bad. <laughs> now, nah, why be Nigerian they call me barista? Now, nah, me, now nah, me. I, I, he has told me before that he does not, not interested in that. All right, Abdurrahim, please kindly go ahead. Um, so maybe Mr. Barry, what we can do is maybe take two questions or you know, two submissions back to back. Um, so we can come to you uh, with, with the questions. To save time, I'm trying to go ahead. I know that all this family that they've been talking about, they pinch you properly. Go ahead. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity to speak. Um, Mr. Obiara, thank you for coming on space. I've heard you talk about the Nord a lot, and that's what sparked my interest. And I just wanted to ask you uh, a very few questions. Um, so you talk about the dates, uh, the dates three, right? I just wanted to know. Yes. From your knowledge, uh, which of the northern states can actually grow dates twice a year? Because I'm from here, and if the government is not willing to, your beautiful proposal shouldn't go in vain. There are people who can actually do it individually, but perhaps the knowledge is not there. Personally, I don't have knowledge on that. So, so please, if you can share with me those states you feel uh, can do these dates twice a year. I have access to at least 900 hectares, and I can work on things like that. So um, possibly that. And also you spoke about the uh, 1963 constitutional framework and what have you. It's really interesting, sir. You know, we have leaders from the North who actually go into politics to feed themselves and their families. As such, when you write proposals like that, they don't see the vision. They don't, they don't, they don't see any realistic things happening with your proposals. Thank you for the such proposals. It's only a, a patriotic individual uh, like you that would do things like that to, for the other parts of the country. I mean, I'm so jealous of the eastern part, having people like you. If you have five people of you in this in this part of the world, would would be better off. So, sir, I just wanted to know if uh, perhaps you're talking about regional system or perhaps you want more uh, uh, power to the states, because I'm also an advocate of this restructuring. If, st if states could have more power than the federal, I mean, we could do a lot. You can start, we can just pack a revolution in, in my state, Sokoto, and we'll overthrow the governor and put someone who is capable of doing it. So my two questions, please, which states in the northern part would grow the dates twice a year? And perhaps which of the uh, constitution, constitutional framework are you talking about with regards to restructuring? Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Emeka, before you answer that question, um, Abdul, Abdul Rahim, I, I'll appreciate if you can follow Mr. Mecca, Mr. Mecca, you can follow him and pass that information to him in his DM. That information is something you work for and uh, they don't deserve getting it for free. You have a proposal for that. They consider the fact that he wants to work on it. I think it deserves um, having that proposal. But it's not something should be shared around uh, publicly like this. Uh, your germ and there's a reason why violence face brought you here. If they didn't bring you here, that information won't be out there. Um, if the government are interested in making use of this, they should contact you. You know, um, the obedient movement is here for a purpose. I don't want to discard the fact that this young man is interested, and I love his um, 
energy towards working uh, uh making Daddy. use of this opportunity to come in. so yeah um mr Ober, uh, mr Mecca, please kindly follow him and help him in every way you can whoever wants to Thank make you. that information should contact you it's not something they can just uh hop on violence space and get that information mm -hmm. because, 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 because they, they, are, they are tuned in they are tuned in with their they will, they will find out the state Jimmy. and come back to it. Sorry, they will, they will sorry. Jackies, sorry. Yeah, they will sorry. Yeah. Jimmy, I'm sorry. I honestly disagree with you. I just want to know which of those states can produce the dates. The, 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 whole, the whole 90 states in the north of Nigeria represent the date value space. And, and, let, 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 and let me tell you what will shock you. Um, One of the guys who produce the best hybrid seed it's in Kano. It's a it's a it's a man, Jafago. In fact, most of my my hybrid seedlings that I've ever had, the best I, I from Kano. He's a full of the guy. In fact, the guy every time we talk, he weeps. In fact, he, he was the first person to organize the date meeting. I was in Kano for more than one week. He organized the date. We had it. The, the, he funded it himself. Jafago, go go him. He's a, he's a full of the guy. In, 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 the guy is even tired. He, anytime we talk, he says, say, Make, I'm tired. I find that if, if it's possible, I will locate and leave Nigeria. This guy has devoted all his life. The whole 90 states in the north are date belts. From Meduguri to Benue to Nasarawa, they are date belts. That's number one. And see, one of the problems we've had is insecurity. I don't know if any of you have heard about Aminu Yako. Aminu Yako is um, Yako's son, Yako, the retired general in the in the Air Force and Navy. Morita Yako, Morita Yako. Yako's son. Go and see what Aminu is doing. And of course, Aminu included his own security. That's why you can all these bandits and just cannot go near Yako's farm. Aminu, Aminu is a young boy. Aminu is actually, Aminu should be about less than forty years. You know, it's shocking to me that none of the 19 governors of the Northern State have actually gone to see what Aminu is doing. I bet you, if these governors are sincere and they go to Aminu, and Aminu decide to help them to replicate what he's doing in Adamawa, the North will be a value belt for honey and milk. They are not serious. My brother, let's talk in box. You, you are, your 900 hectares of land is, in fact, you actually be on the FOB list. If you if insecurity will allow you, that's it. True. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Obiari. Um, all right. Quickly, I'll just go straight to. Uh, okay, let's take a lady. And since you are back, so feel free to chime in anytime. This has been a very uh, tough conversation. Uh, Agogo, let's take a lady. So we'll go to Agogo. Okay, my question will be quick. I trade cross border Canada US, right? So on eBay and Poshmark and do all the I do those trading for fun. And the US dollar has been biting me. It's been a headache. The US dollar is like it's going up every single day. And I'm looking at the Naira. US dollar is going up. Naira is going up. It doesn't make any economic sense to me. Right, I, I keep telling people that the central bank is defending, but you know, Olu keeps when we go back and forth, it's like, No, I don't know what I'm saying. So, my question is that how do we, like, maybe if an obedient group want to just sit down on top of the central bank and monitor their reserve? I can monitor Canadian um, central bank reserve, but whenever I go to the central bank just to go and see Nigeria to just see the reserve and just see how it's moving. I they get headache. I'm not understanding it. So is there, is there a clearer way to see what's going on in Nigerian Central Bank and understand how the reserves move? So that's my question. Thanks. There is, there is, there is no clearer way. What they're just doing is what I call government's foolishness and stupidity. There is no better. I give you an example, Mexico. Mexico, over the last two years, exported $476 billion worth of goods and revenue to the US. Nationwide, global wise, is that five billion dollars. Foreign diaspora investment is fifty-six billion dollars. Foreign direct investment is six billion dollars. Peso gained twenty percent over the US dollar. These guys are being stupid and foolish and wicked and angry. And and I see. Let me tell you. I want to use the word. They, they can rec record. This is being recorded. It's very simple. If we fix corruption, fix insecurity, ramp up 
oil output to 2.5 million barrels a day. Let me tell you, Nigeria, if we fix in security and provide 27, 24-7 security over Nigeria, we will generate, process, and next $375 billion worth of goods and services. Our maximum, for the highest we have ever imported in Nigeria was $89 billion. And it happened in 2011 when we had $98 billion crude oil export. If we are producing and exporting $375 billion and our import bill is $97 billion, supply, um, supply is more than demand. Naira will come down to the level it was in the 60s. This, they are just being stupid. You don't, you don't need to defend Naira. The only way you can defend Naira is to create policies, programs, constitutional and physical arrangements that enable you to produce and export more than you import. And that is it. Yeah. The, 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 that is, there's no, there's no scary. All this you see, I mean, these, these guys are criminals and wicked people. Provide 24 7 security. Protect the oil and gas assets. Put Nigerians to work. Nigerians can produce and export $375 billion worth of goods and services. Our import bill at maximum is $90 billion. When you have $375 billion export and $90 billion import, Naira will come down to even $50 Naira to $1. The idiots and criminals will not do the right things. God help us. All right. All right. Thank you very much. I think, Agogo, in summary, you, you've been confused when you try to monitor the Nigeria foreign reserve. It's not your fault. That's how they want it to be. They want you to be confused. So uh, I'm sorry for you, actually. Quite sad as well. All right. Um, quickly, I'll just go straight to Savik. Savik, you have been here for some time. So let's quickly take Savik. Then I'll come to Naira Exchange. Thank, thank you so much, Wemini, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nemeka. This has been an, uh, a fantastic space. You know, um, actually, listening to you on this space, you know, is getting me uh, right up, getting me more annoyed than um, I'm, I'm already annoyed with Nigeria. You know, so uh, I, I just, I, I read what Barista Juliet read, wrote on the, um, on the uh, I think, on the chat. You know, a uh, violent space is actually a space we should be streaming for the younger ones, the younger minds that they have, their minds have not been corrupted in Nigeria, probably the primary school, the secondary school, and the young ones in the, in the campuses for them to listen because, because the, the, the ones that we have on, on the spaces, the, the Ronu and the likes, their minds are already criminally corrupted. So I don't think whatever we're saying here is going to move them. So what I think is that if there's a way we can actually, you know, get this kind of information across to the younger ones, the ones that are coming up that at least their minds has not been inf infiltrated with these criminal rogues that are currently, you know, ravaging the country. Uh, and again, what I wanted to say is that you, you nailed it, you know, you nailed it when you say there are cri three critical pieces that need to, that need Nigeria to move forward. And one is fixed in security. And then you know, uh, protecting our assets, which is actually our major export hub, the oil and gas, you know, and then investing in agriculture, like you've said. If we do these three, these three uh, critical pieces, Nigeria is going to move forward. So my question is, looking at where we are right now, we know that we are being governed by criminal roads, right? Nigeria is a crime scene. It's, it's already uh, visible to the blind and audible to the deaf. We know that every single person that is at the helm of affairs in Nigeria currently, they are all criminally minded. No one wants to move the country forward. So I would ask you a question. What do you think is the citizen action? Because that's actually, we need to get an action out of this. Because this is a very beautiful space. Every single thing you've said here is actually, you know, 100% correct. You've been fact-checked. And uh, Zim is doing the fact check as you're talking. And what I want to say, what do we do from here? What, what is the action that the citizens need to take to make sure that we operationalize this section that we have today? I, I, don't, I don't just feel that we can get out of this place today and continue to do the same thing. Nigerians are tired. The, the information you've passed across today, it is something that I, all Nigerians need to, you know, get a grasp of. Most especially people in the north. They need to understand exactly how they've been subdued and actions need to be taken. 
So what is your advice on citizen actions that we need to take going forward? Thank you. My advice is very simple. Emia Saddam has set up a Twitter um, and space. And uh, his Twitter space has been one of the most efficient in Nigeria. My advice to every one of us that each and every one of us must remain steadfast. We must not compromise. We should not shift the goalpost. Let our actions, our postulations, our submissions remain consistent. Somebody asked me a question. What, what, how will you assure us you will not compromise? Let me tell you, in Babylon, over a million Jews were kidnapped and taken to Babylon. Prophets, professors, seers, scribes, chiefs. But it took only four young men, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who refused to bow to the wickedness of Nebuchadnezzar and his gods to change the whole direction of Babylon, even to the point of death. And that is what each and every one of us must ascribe to. You say the truth will die. You don't say the truth will die. So why would not say the truth and live? So, see, some of us have come a long way. I, I said somebody, somebody was asking me to say, why come you're so stubbornly committed to this? I said, 24 years ago, I came to this land with only three trousers and two shirts. There's nothing the devil can do that can take me to the state I was 24 years ago. Nothing. And I look at myself and look around me. I have three children, two girls and a boy. And my 11-year-old girl, if you see this girl, she's one of the and I want to, I, so, you know, sometimes when I'm on, on Facebook, I want to reply to somebody who angered me. There was a day I wanted, I typed a paragraph. It was filled with insults. The girl said, Dad, no, wait. 11-year-old girl, she edited my paragraph and removed five insults. I was so shocked. In fact, I felt I was ashamed. And I also, I felt pride. Ashamed because 11-year-old girl should correct me. I'm proud because I raised a girl who is taking after me the way I took after my father. And that is what it should be. The truth is, some of us must stand for what is right consistently. We must not abuse positions. We must not do what their criminals are doing. And then we must keep on preaching the message. People are listening. People are. Peter B is an icon. Let me tell you, even those who hate him, they love him. They want to be like him, but they can't be like him. So we must be consistent because the worst thing that can betray a movement is when people don't quote. I begin to do what is evil. Imagine if after I've all said what I've said today, people recorded me, and then tomorrow you hear that I'm working with the criminals. How would people? It would destroy a lot of people that believe in the movement. Peter had been, Peter always said verify. That was why when people, when you know some of these religious bandits, they will tell you, oh, they hate Christianity. They are abusing. Them. When people ask them to account and they verify some of their criminal miracles, they will say that attack. If you if you know what it means to attack Christianity in the Old Testament, in the in in Antioch, they were being butchered. They were being killed. In the we must stand for what is right. Nobody is butchering anybody. In the in Nigeria. We must stand for the truth, believe in the truth, live for the truth. Many will join the movement. I can tell you, Nigeria is changing. 2027 will not be like 2023. Forget all their games and all those stuff. Remain steadfast, do what is right, live right, let people see you as the beacon of light. Let your doing go beyond your saying. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, Mr. Obiariri. Obia and I, I, I really agree with what you said. Um, all right, okay. I think at this point, I'll just could, uh, and, and since you can, and because I know that you, you are trying to, you are shuffling between a lot of things. Um, now, actually, please just uh, give, give me a minute. Uh, let me go straight to Ensis now that it's available. Ensis, go ahead. Um, I've, I've enjoyed today's space. Um, there's been a lot of data, numbers have been crunched, and if you know me, that is that is what uh, excites me. Um, the honest truth is there's nothing new said here that we have not said before. A lot of this data we've even read, even as far as Nigeria's wealth minus agriculture down to solid minerals. So, um, Ogami, Mr. Emeka, I want to ask a question. And this is my question. You would have to bear with me. In every facet of Nigeria, Nigeria has been kidnapped and taken over 
by a criminal organization. We can package it under anything we want to package it, but we've been taken over by a criminal organization. They will not do the work. The customs has been compromised. One of the biggest smugglers in the country is a card carrying traveling member of the president's entourage. The, you know, just you're already seeing trillions being budgeted for a coastal highway that had no, you know, there was no study done before, there was no bidding process done before high tech was picked. Look, my question is this how bad? Because I've reached a point where I understand that the criminality must continue. The oil theft must continue. Hold on. The oil theft must continue. The criminality must continue. So I want to ask a question. How bad can it get before our leaders will also feel the pain? Because as long as they can still budget land cruisers for themselves and all of that, I don't think that they will ever do anything credible. There will be no work done as long as five billion can be used to buy a yacht. There will be no work done. So I, I want you to add, just please help me answer with the dollar to the naira. At what point? At what is it five thousand naira to a dollar that our leaders will start feeling it or what? Because right now you know that they will not ramp up the oil theft. It is so bad that soldiers are involved in the oil theft. The community killed 17 of them. We've seen the real underground stories. So oil theft will not be ramped up. Financial planner Carlo Aja has been shouting that we should import food to back up the deficit because obviously the jihadist members amongst them will not sort out insecurity. So I ask, how bad does it have to get till Asurok starts to feel it, till at least they start to feel it? That is just my question. Because nothing will definitely be done. I've crunched these same numbers you crunched more than two years ago on this space on record. And nothing has been done. Tenubu is not fight, not working with an urgency that he understands that Buhari left him a landmine. So I ask, how bad does it have to get before everybody from Wiki to the poorest man to the Ronu Batidiot will then feel it and then all of us can tell ourselves the truth? Thank you. My, my brother, you know, as, you, as you were saying, I was just laughing in my mind. Let me tell you, you know, there's something about Nigeria like, yeah, that baffles me. People see the wickedness, they see the criminality, and they still support it. You ask a very important question. At what point are we going to get for people to get common sense? Perfect. See yes, Nigeria, perfect. Yeah. You've answered, you asked it perfect. Nigeria is one country. Sincerely, that if we decide to, if we can fix the constitutional, physical and leadership problem we have in Nigeria today, Nigeria is one country. That if we want to get naira to be extended to the one naira to one dollar in the next ten years, we can do it. Nineteen sixty-five. Go and check the record. The per capita GDP of Nigeria was bigger than that of South Korea, <laughs> that of Singapore, that of Malaysia, that of Indonesia, that of China. In fact, as of 1980, Nigeria was ahead of South Korea in terms of GDP per capita, in terms of GDP. Today, South Korea has GDP of $1.6 trillion. Nigeria is at $4.7 billion. It's laughable. How many are they in South Korea? What are they doing? Are not doing? You know, it, 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 it's, it's shocking. Sometimes I cry, sometimes I laugh. My brother, the problem is even confounded. <laughs> you know, let me ask that set up this space. Check the number of people here. You will be you see the only opposition we have in Nigeria, the only reasonable right thinking people, same people in Nigeria, had your obedience. How many are we? We are just, you know, the only thing we need to do, to be honest with you. Like somebody asked me this question, and that guy is one of the most respected people. The person that asked me said, oh, Doc, I hope you will not compromise. <laughs> I don't want to hear like Daniel Buala or Reno. You are scavenging for food, and then you are now on the side of the oppre oppressors. You know, some of us need to be very honest with ourselves. We need to be consistent. And even those who gained prominence using P2B, 
who has now turned to Obote. We have 34 House of Rep members of the Labour Party. We have eight senators of the Labour Party, people that wrote on the, on the, at the back of Pitobi. But you can see that those criminals never for one day oppose the criminality in the National Assembly and Nigeria. You will not hear their voice. And I just pray many of us on this Twitter space will not ride on the back of what Emir Saddam is doing and some of the honest obedience like Pearl, like Mama, like some of the very few who have remained consistent to tongue rogue. There are many who are, who are uh, had 2,000 followers on Twitter. They wrote on P2B to have almost half a million followers. They have tongue rogue. They are now using their position to extort and extract monies from the bandits to host them on spaces and all those stuff. We need to ask ourselves this. We need to be very, you know, my heart breaks. We need to be honest with ourselves. Let me tell you, at the end of the day, you ask yourself, Dr. Michael Lockbara and Sam Mbakwe and Amadou Bello and Abafi Mawolo, they don't have media people laundering their image, but their legacies and their names are celebrated and will be celebrated even after many of us are long gone. Michael Lockbara was a 39 year old medical doctor who became premier of the old eastern nigeria six years he built 214 kilometer industrial belt in fact in his house in Omoaya, i visited it four years ago he took Abia state government intervention to rebuild his house the man did not steal the man did not loot he died a pauper but he built legacies that still stand for eternity he does not need to buy anybody on the media space to plunder his image. His name stands as God. And that is what each and every one of us must aspire to retain. I pray and I pray, and I want this opportunity to beg every one of us on this space. Don't abuse privilege. Don't use opportunities, popularities given to you, 100,000 followers, 1 million followers, to begin to be, behave like the political bandits in APC and PDP. As long as I'm concerned, after God is P2P. I'm being honest with you. P2P is, I'm, I'm, I, people say, hey, Mecca, you have integrity. Hey, Mecca, you're disciplined. If I am 10% as like P2P, I will have been far away from where I am today. Peter is an enigma. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mecca. I mean, I think you just affirmed what a lot of us know about. Salam, go ahead. Okay, no, thank you very much, uh, sir. I just wanted to uh, make a quick announcement because in the comment section, um, a whole lot of people are already asking who who spoke, uh, who's, who spoke while uh, Mr. Uh, Indemeka was speaking. And yeah, that is Ms., uh, Mr. I think, uh, Alozier. He will be with us. He hopefully will be with us next week um, on Thursday. But we're planning to see how Thursdays we'll be bringing technical. Sa 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 Salam, sorry, let me interject. Alozier Awambo. Is a man I respect. See, let me tell you. Mr. 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 GRV will be on the Power and Facts space tomorrow. Um, but uh, so please join us um 7:30 tomorrow. It's gonna be uh, an amazing seven o'clock, not seven thirty. Is it seven thirty? Seven o'clock, sorry, but yeah. I just want to take uh, one minute, just one minute to uh, we have been hearing a whole lot of stuff. Go to the comment section. I've been seeing comments. Sir, you have been doing an amazing job. It's it's mixed feelings, but for some people it's depressing knowing how much we have as a country and where we are not where we are meant to be. It is so painful. And you can see uh, people people's comments. People are fact-checking you real time, seeing everything you're saying is real. The dates, what you said about dates, people are already are on Google. How many times can you plan dates in a people are doing are seeing what you're doing and are verifying it? So to try and cool down the atmosphere before we bring you back up and continue. Guys, we we'll have to extend more time because I am really enjoying this conversation. So I hope you have more time for us. I am here as long as you are here, my brother. God bless you, sir. So let me just take you to uh, just uh, give me one minute, two minutes, please. My friend, one of my very good friends, he has a message for all of us. Please listen. Please, everybody, please pay attention, please. Nepal. Problem don't happen. 
n'est pas <coughs> les 300,000 last week. <coughs> This week again. This week again, another 300,000. Is it there your pocket? Yes. <laughs> How can a common man survive? Four oh, man cannot survive now. <coughs> Just three rooms. <laughs> three rooms. What's going on? 100 K. Ah. I thought that joke at the support you now before government said uh -huh. let it. <laughs> and salary is still low. <laughs> you have to do something very quickly. You have to do something very, very quickly. This is no longer a joke. It's not a joke. No. Petrol don't go up. Petrol is high. Gas is up. Guys, diesel up. Now light up. Salary is still dwarf. We don't want more crime. Ah. Do something about How many people survive? Government. This is very easy. This is very bad. Ah, there are no support now for this Nepal. If you, if you want even increase times three and a half or times four, meanwhile they use hundred k a month. Now nah, they use hundred k a week. So it doesn't make sense. Anymore. What about common man that can afford it? <laughs> that can afford so it. What they do? They will be in that. So place. technically, you are pushing some people to. Complete darkness. So how would they produce anything in darkness? How can people survive? Nothing. All right. I just think I'm just. I mean, who, who be the pastor, the assistant pastor for back when they interpret the sermon? That one for just the interpreting Yoruba now. No one understands what's going on. Wait. Wait. Just let's see how wicked the Nigerian who are bitter. But you go up. You don't complain. Gas go up. I don't complain. Uh, which one go up? I don't complain. The one we can go up when it's in yes. Now, light now. <laughs> he go up. Now he remember say he go complain. You see how wicked the engineers can be. You see how weak. I don't support him for this one, though, but he supported them petrol going up. Supported selfish. Them, these are going up. Selfish. So, very selfish human beings. But we don't hear. No, wahala. Please, let's go back to our guy. I just let me try and give people some laughter because what I've been hearing here, my head won't break. Well, Nigeria, please, back to you. Yes, yeah, Salam, I'm here. I have a jump for you people. A whole fire shade, wagon owner is complaining. What is a 30,000 naira enna going through? Okay, no wahala. Baby steps of pain. Baby steps of pain. Move along. Blood don't they cover my leg. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I mean, because let's start up. Thank you for bringing that because some of the two. One well, minute. Yeah. Sorry, I, I want I want ask you one question. Who are the speculators that they keep shouting that? Uh, uh manipulating the forex you know yeah, i think somebody have asked that kitchen. question somebody said really, really? Yeah, yeah someone, yeah, said yeah, yeah, mommy, I, 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 someone I, asked it yeah. somebody oh, okay. It. Yeah. okay someone sent it to my dm as well let me explain to you see when we talk about speculate expect, let me t let me tell what's happening eh? speculation happens when there is uncertainty and lack of trust and confidence on those who purport to lead you. I know of somebody that bought dollar, he borrowed money to buy dollar at 1,800, and today the guy is crying. Why did the guy buy dollar at 1,800? The guy does not import anything. He does not trade in dollar, but he was scared because of the way the Naira, the Naira was falling. So he wanted to hedge and protect himself. Speculation happened. Have you ever bothered to ask yourself, how come there is no speculation in America against the dollar? How come there's no speculation against the pound sterling in the UK? How come there's no speculation against the dirham in the UAE? Speculation happens when the people and the government have zero trust on the criminals and bandits who are governing and leading them. If we have a president and governors and members of National Assembly who elicit trust, as we had under Amadou Bello, Nafawa Beloa, Namda Zikwe, uh, Wolowo, and uh, Michael Okbara, there will not have been any speculation. Between 1960 to 1966, 65 pence was equivalent to $1. It never shifted one cent. 
because there was absolute trust and confidence of the people on those they elected to do the right things. Speculation happens just the way all of us are doubting because you don't have confidence and trust on the criminals and the bandits whose only interest is in how to loot, kill, share, and destroy. If we have leadership in the mood of Michael Obara, Awolowo, Sabumbakwe, Nigerians will not bother hedging them. So if it had been the president, nobody will speculate. And that is the truth. Are you the man? All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Onimeka. Thank you very much for that. All right. Quickly, um, let me take Naira Exchange. Naira Exchange will be here for the longest. Um, after which, I'll come to move bubble. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to say hello to everybody, and I'll just jump right in. But just quickly to talk about this uh, funny thing about people talking about speculators or some funny weird reasons why the Naira is uh, dropping. Whenever you hear things like that, it tells you that um, the people you have in the office or in the highest positions don't have a clue. When you hear things like um, Naira is going, is dropping because somebody needs to pay school fees or speculations, just, just understand that the person there doesn't have a clue of what he's doing. That, that's just a simple thing. But I wanted to ask um, Mr. Nemeka some questions. It's in the oil sector, so I'm quite happy about this because I track some things that are happening in the industry in the oil sector. And recently, Oando made a deal with Ajib to buy the inland asset of Ajib. Recently, Shell started selling off their inland assets. Some things are going on. Now, the Orlando deal is quite funny because if you look at the balance book of Orlando, their profits for the last five years, you discover that these are not such a, a very, they're not declaring that huge amount of profit. So they're suddenly buying assets that are quite large and they were sold it at peanuts. So I want to ask him what's going on in that sector. Then the second question I want to ask him as well is that um, Cardoso tried to, make, tried to make a deal to take loans based on future sales of our oil revenue. What is the implication of that after these bandits have left the seats? And then finally, I thank God that sometimes I thank God that Peter will be didn't just go in because we needed to know how bad things were. With what's going on now, has he sat down with people like Peter Obi and Soludo to try and draft and really go into the nitty-gritty of their economic policies and really fine-tune them for maybe 2027? And then just a bonus question. How can we solve the banditry that happened in 2023 technology-wise? Just those questions. Thank you. Okay, I will start with the first question you asked. There is nothing so spectacular about the Orlando acquisition. Let me tell you what is happening here. The oil majors, Shell, Chevron, Ajib, any, that are divesting because of the criminality, the opacity, the insecurity in our oil and gas sector. And I say it clearly. We are where we are because of the criminality and opacity. The goals in power refuse to give way for transparency. And I can tell you, I'll give you an example. The NLNG is the only public corporation that is owned 51% by private sector investors, 49% by government of Nigeria to NNPC, and there is transparency and government, corporate governance culture there. And you can see what they are doing. The, those in power know what to do, don't want to do it. Today, Nigeria has 27, 37 billion barriers of good reserve that can be go up to $50 billion if we have new investments. Brazil has only 15.5 billion dollar, 15.5 billion uh, barriers of crude oil. Yet Brazil has 174 billion dollar valued Petrobras, 121 billion dollar revenue per annum, and 37 billion dollar profit per, per, per annum because of the they devalued the system, brought in private investors, listed on the exchange, and then things are doing are doing well. They don't want the criminals that have been in government from 1999, no exception, have refused to give up their hold on NMPC and allow it to be like the other Aramco, Petrobras, Petronas, Emirate Oil, because it is their stooge and their conduit pipe to keep on seeing and oppressing Nigerians. Nigeria can ramp up reserve to 45 billion barrels a day, but we need to open up that space. We don't need even Shell and Chevron to run our oil and gas sector. I give you an example. 
we have Nigerian diasporans who are doing $25 billion per annum, which is like chicken change. I have been privileged as head of investment back in one of the deposit money banks in Nigeria in 2007 to interact with Nigerians in diaspora. And I can tell you for sure that if we put a transparent system in the oil and gas sector, we can easily attract 50 to $100 billion from Nigerians in diaspora. I'll give you an example. If the federal government of Nigeria by Barack Nibu should be honest to do what Petrobras did, do a hybrid IPO and offer for sale, sell 60% of federal government holding an NPC, which will give us that $8 billion. Do IPO of $20 billion, which will give us $58 billion. Decide to float it on the floor of the exchange. Stop the criminal allocation of marginal fuels to people who do not have financial technical capacity, just like Aramco is doing. If you want to invest in oil and gas, go to the privatized NMPC. I tell you of a truth. If we do this, bring transparency, bring accountability, remove the opacity and criminality. If the current, if the new NMPC decide to raise bonds of fifty billion dollars to explore oil and increase our oil reserve, Nigerians and diaspora will invest. I will invest. You will invest, and I will tell you in five years. We will take up to the asset of NPC from the current 58 billion to 100 billion, even 150 billion, even 200 billion. We will increase our oil reserve to about 50 billion barriers. We will do output to about 4 million barriers a day. And that is the truth. Nigeria is a very, very rich country. This thing I'm telling you is they know the truth. They won't do like Petronas. They don't want to be like Petrobras. They won't do like Aramco. They won't do this thing I'm telling you because what I am telling you, we remove the 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 puppets of their feet. Yeah. We have criminals, deliberate criminals. See, see, you know, you know what pains me so much that we have mass of global people. You see, people they will abuse Adam, they will abuse Pearl, they will abuse Momo, they will abuse Nefetiti, they will abuse everybody. The the people who are abusing you, Woye and Co. Don't even know what I'm talking about. Those I'm addressing, they are most of them are listening. They are on this Twitter space listening. They know I am saying 110% the truth of what we need to do. If we do this in five years, Nigeria will have a one trillion dollar. Let me tell you, we have a global infrastructure master development plan that was built in 2007 with the help of World Bank that required three trillion dollar investment over the next 30 years to make Nigeria a second world economy. Nigeria can easily attract $100 billion investment into this economy mm -hmm. annually. If we strengthen it, we have criminals who do not care. Yeah. These guys are straight dance. Sorry. Are you the man? Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Nemeka. All right, quickly, so so we can... Um, I, I mean, I know you you, you, have, you could stay here long, but that it will not be fair. You've been here speaking for a long time, so I think it's um, good. We probably release you as soon as possible, but we'll just take um, as much questions as we can take so please if i give you the mic now just go straight to your question a minute then maybe you can answer it possibly in a minute or two and we'll just take you know sharp sharp and, and go like that all right i'll quickly come to mo bobo after mo bobo i would um come to uh this guy just again go ahead mo bobo. okay good evening guys uh good morning good afternoon wherever you're spacing from um thank you i just want to appreciate you for everything you've been doing adam melmi and sick me my brother in spirits and i thank uh naimeka for such an educative place so my main question was how long will the be the bubble last well i think from your earlier submission i can from there so i don't know Celebrate something you said about this uh, security issue. So I'm from the northeast, Meduguri, and I lived in Meduguri through the, the worst season of Boko Haram. So it got to a point where we did this kind of community security that you were talking about. So what we did was every home in like all the areas, all the streets. Every home would have at least one person like staying on guard in the night, through the night. And when we started this thing, the attacks 
like it went down to zero and it was like we did it like based on what uh jimmy said about like bad people and everything it got to a point where even if your brother like if you know your brother or somebody in your family that has gotten involved in all this insecurity stuff and all you are you, you will be the one to even bring out the person yourself for for everybody to deal with so doing that we're able to cop a lot of these like attacks they used to bring in the night and all and everything. Yeah. And uh, again, I just want to add like, what we have to do is like just to keep educating people. Like we just have to keep talking to our people. Me, I, I never miss a chance to, to to talk to people about like what's happening like in the north and everything. Trying to open people's eyes yeah. to what is exactly going on, so people become aware. So, like, if they get away and they see everything that's going on, maybe they'll get angry enough for there to be a real civil action, like somebody said. Yeah. Well, that's my submission. All thank right, you. thank you very much. Uh, so, so. You say what? You say I have one Valencia. You deserve that. Like, uh, no, no. Well done. And it's nice to be able to talk yeah. in the space. Thank it's you. Good to hear the one for an insight that don't speak often. It's only often good to hear that. But I, thank you. Thank you. So I think you just affirmed some of the things um, Mr. Onemeka had said. You just came to give proof of the solution he, had, he was proposing, even in the tick of Boko Haram. So I don't think Mr. Onemeka needs to. There was pretty much no question there. Um, quickly, I'll just go straight to uh, High Scent. After I sent, we'll take a lady, so I'll come to Rita. Okay, um, let me ask my question there. Uh, let me just get there. Dr. Nemeka, Dalo, <laughs> Dalo. So let me just say something. Uh, does it mean that uh, the state governors cannot do anything about, especially the South, South, and the South East, uh, apart from Abia State, when we have abundance of uh, gas littered everywhere that they cannot even try as much as possible to do something about this electricity since the, uh, it is now an ex exclusive list. Because since I enter Aquarium, I'm on only two one hour light where they see you. Uh, the thing they pay me, my, my ow. It's just a question, small. Is there anything that the state governor cannot do at all at all? Or is it beyond them? Or are they try, trying to, they just become so dumb at all like that? I don't understand. Okay, let, let me tell you, the state governors, most of them are 99% that are wicked. I give you an example. I just state, the Alex Wood is just about less than a year in office. As I'm talking to you, you know why or not, we are doing about 80 greenhouses. The mayor there, Victor E. Cage, fenced about eight hectares of land. He fenced it. And as I'm talking, just let me tell you, I was I was privileged to be in the, you know, I am a young person. 82. I don't know. Some of you are, no, most people on this space are young people. 76 to 82 class, University of Ibadan, medical doctors who graduated from University of Ibadan. 1970, 1972. I don't know how many of us who is up, who was born between 1972, Ghana in Enugu. These are grandfathers and grandmothers. People, even of them worked in the US and the UK. In fact, one of them, the first time they saw it came back to Nigeria after 22 years was last year, this year. And they called me to come and speak to them. And what was their vision and what was their cry? They don't want to leave Nigeria without adding value. Doctor, how do we invest? I tried to persuade them to concentrate on their on their course, which is medicine. They said, no, I Greek. Um, why are not Victor Ikeji? Eight, eight hectares of land, the first state, we are doing 60 greenhouses. Um, I, 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 I have here in Abreba, 40, hec uh, 40 hectares of land, Bordex, we are doing about 100 greenhouses and eight hectares of Cavendish banana. What was the arrangement? They have a governor who is focused. <laughs> and the plan is, every local government area, out of the seven, they want to attract Revenues of about two billion naira every year, which is more than what their fac, their jack, will give them every year. They want to be independent of jack. 
they are not asking governor to bring money they are creating the environment the, the the greenhouse i'm not the one funding it though diasporans are saying okay we have this people are investing they are buying two greenhouses people on their own doctor help us to ensure that our money comes back and that is what the power of vision the power of legitimacy can do people have confidence in LXOT and they invest in Nigeria State. In fact, I have seven doctors from my state, Imo State. I told them, okay, let's say, lie, lie, doctor, let's go to Abia. I have about 70 from Enugu State. They said, let's go to Abia. So it is it is not me for pushing them. I tried everything to push them to consider that they refused yeah. they are going to Abia State. So it, the power, the, the rest, a lot rests on the power of the governors. Any governor that wants to build the state can build the state. When people trust you, they will invest in you. And when you don't betray that trust, they will trust you more. And that is the truth. And that is it's also a lesson for every one of us here. The greatest goodwill, the greatest investment you have is the trust people will put on you. Don't betray it. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Nemeka. Let me just follow up. Let yeah. me follow up with this question real quickly. Just, um, I saw where the PDP in um, Edo State wanted to use it to chase cloud. I can remember, so many people here might not have, um, might have missed that tweet where uh, you made, I think it was a video or something about um, how much the federal government are spending on importing tractors. So, and you said you, you could set it up or you're going to set it up. So I don't know if you could highlight on that, setting up that factory. I think the PDP Edo guy said that you should reach out to that they, they, they're going to reach Fix a meeting with you. Um, and you said you said uh, Oti is already doing something about this. So please, I don't know if you could give us more insights. Uh, uh, that. My brother, forget, forget the forget the PDP clouds in those states. They are always trying to reap where they not so. I have been in talks with a Chinese um, tractor company. In fact, last two weeks I was at Innocent Factory in Enugu State. I Innocent Innocent Chukuma. With somebody I know way back 2006, when I was in one of the banks, head of investment bank, the guy has been done so well. So I was talking with the Chinese group. I've been talking with them for the past six years. The tractor, 75 horsepower tractor, with all the equipment, they said they sell it for nine thousand one hundred dollars. I will give you their contact for anybody that wants to verify. And to ship it to Nigeria, we take about fifteen thousand dollars. Everything. Tractor, in fact, bulldozer. These seven bulldozer that they sell for three hundred thousand dollars, they are willing to bring it here as seven thousand dollars. And it's something in 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 China. China has about five point three million tractors in China. When people tell you, oh, Chinese tractors are sub optimal, it's a lie. The Chinese supply twenty percent of the global food for those who do not know. So I've been talking with them. The arrangement was to bring them in under an arrangement. Will, our plan was to bring them in, uh, set up clusters in some friendly states, and then list to people that want to use it. All of it. And after geometric happened, I asked us, okay, I was talking to them, how I not come to Abia State so I can set up a plant? They said, they told me point blank, they can only come if I can guarantee them supply of 5,000 tractors where they can supply in a year. And of course, I only have Abia State as my point of contact. And the arrangement I had with Abia State was set up clusters in every ward, which is 184. 184 is not up to 5,000. And that had been started. I've been talking with them. So when the Minister for Agri in Nigeria came up with criminal idea of spending 995 million euros, which is about a billion, 80, 80 million dollars, to bring 10,000 tractors from John Derry in the UK, I knew it was a criminal scheme. And that was when I did that article. And I said, rather than waste one billion, eighty million dollars to bring in ten thousand tractors, seven fifty million dollars will bring in not just those tractors, and in fact, it will bring also a, 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 a bulldozer that can help us to grade rural road and clear shrubs and even trees. So the Edo guys now lashed on it. The arrangement I've always had with them was to come to Abia State on that geometric test, which I have a place in Okwa where I want them to be. But they told me point blank, they can only come in if I can guarantee them supply of 5,000 tractors and bulldozers every year. Me, I don't have that 
uh, um, kind of strength. Nigeria is a place where we can actually do about 176,000 tractors and bulldozers. But those criminals in Abuja and state do not care. Um, Netherlands, 2 million hectares of land. They have 889,000 tractors. Slovenia, with a land mass of 20,000 um, uh, square kilometers, which is half of um, KB state, they have 5,000 um, um, 225 tractors per 100 square meters. They have over 2 million, tra um, 2 million tractors in that small land mass, as small as Israel. Nigeria as a country should have nothing less than 170 to 200,000 tractors if we want to get. But the criminals, and it will take us about $2.6 billion, which is almost about just 10% uh, of the, 15% uh, uh, of the money they want to spend to do 700 kilometer criminal coastal road projects. So those are those people who are trying to latch in to do Lamba, you know, the normal criminal PDP APC way. So the truth is, the Chinese I'm talking to says, if I can guarantee them 5,000 tractors, 5,000 bulldozers, they can work with either a nod or a nursing or any other independent person. Me, I'm, it's not about my interest. It's about the interest of Nigeria. I'm not selfish about my whatever. I told them I can connect them with a nursing. But they told me, get us an arrangement that can enable us to get about 5,000 tractors. We will come and set up a CKD plant, assembly plant in Nigeria. And it's shocking to me that even me, small me, when we have a, a minister for fine agri, we have a president that can go to China to the Xi Jinping and they beg them to do this. They don't want to do it. Because if they do, if they have a CKD plant in Nigeria that can supply us at fifteen, uh, $10,000 um, and the, and the Buddha system, they won't be able to steal. You can see the kind of wickedness we have in Nigeria. Yeah. Me, small me, can be talking about this thing. Then those in power who have the uh, embassies, who have the commercial attaches, who can speak to CNGP or whatever, are not doing it. Yeah. This country is, a, is a, an active crime scene because it breaks my heart to say this. Thank, Sorry. thank you very much, Mr. Henry, because I mean, I, just, just talking alone, I was just thinking, aside the need for the tractor for agriculture, you, you just think about the possibility, the, 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 um, the labor, uh, the people that will be employed, then the thought of the possibility of starting to export tractors to neighboring countries in Africa, then I mean, in some of these conversations God, God, through, God, God, God bless you, Emir Saddam. That was the idea. We have a 600 million man market in sub-Sahara Africa. If these guys step into Nigeria, we will take over the whole African space. But you know, if I, I don't want to start crying, sorry. Let's continue, yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just... All right, quickly, let's go straight to um, Rita. After Rita, I'll come to Justice. Fam Z, Fam Z, I can see you on the speaker section, but your hand is not up, so maybe you probably raise your hand if you're still here. All right, thank you, Walmini. Um, Emia, greetings, everyone. Dr. Nemeka, I greet you specially, sir. For, for almost everything you have said here today, we're actually what P.O. was saying during the campaign period. In some of these guys' thoughts, it was never achievable. I'm so happy you are seeing them here again on the recorded space. Momo earlier talked about the, 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 the rice um, industry and what's going on there. I'm a frozen food dealer. And currently I can tell you for sure, as in for a fact, that lots of frozen food dealers in Nigeria have packed up and many more are going out as a result of no light and they don't have the capital to fuel or even get generated for, the, for, for their businesses. And then the inflation rate too, it's crazy. As we speak, a lot of some persons will come and say, do you know the distance I came from just to get this thing from you? And Momo said that lots of Nigerians are, are suffering. That is 100% true. As we speak today, original Titus fish, you don't have the one of 1,005 
anymore. The fish we used to sell a few years ago, the title fish we used to sell for 300 naira, is now sold for at least 1,800 naira. Yeah. You know how one Titus fish sells for two five and over, I mean, two five, two seven, and just like yeah. that. Sorry, no, that businesses you are, you are closing. Questions, and, right, um, no, 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 sweetie. No, no, no. All right, this just, is what I really came to say. You know, spaces so like this. Okay, great. You know, spaces like this don't come all the time. So when you have this opportunity, it is good you say to the world, let the world know that indeed Nigerians are suffering. Not this audio thing and propaganda that the APC are doing right now. Nigerians are suffering already and you are increasing light tariff when the salary is still where it is, not even checking. Yeah. What's his name? Sorry, sweetie, I'll be wrapping up soon. I was his name, Bayo some time ago, said on a rise, that even some of the states are unable to pay the 30,000 the 30, Naira minimum wage. As a matter of fact, it's only 10 states. And yet you are increasing things and inflation are high. What are you doing? Is it not to kill the people? So, sir, once again, I want to say thank you very much. And I hope these people are hearing. In fact, we didn't vote for them. So I'm just really praying God take them away and give us the people we vote for. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, Rita. Thank you very much for that insight. You were brought in fish, in fish angle. <laughs> it's crazy. All right. Quickly, we're going to go to um, Justice. Justice, quickly. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you very much, Well, Mayor Nigeria. Uh, I want to really salute uh, Mr. Abiyari for, um, you know, actually making me angry today, making me cry, making me want to, you know, I have actually been cursing on my timeline because uh, at this point, I really do not know whether God really dislikes Nigeria, you know, to, to congregate the space with a lot of wicked, conscienceless group of bandits, like he called them as uh, politicians in Nigeria and, uh, and of course followers in fact followers start first before the leaders i don't know why we are like this as a as a nation but we can only hope for for the best uh, when we have uh, a criminal drug baron you know in abuja and a certificate forging bandit he is not going to do any of these things profiled here as a solution even though they have um, their listeners and their hand handlers telling them what you know Nigerians are basically saying. So my question is, you know, all these things we have listed here sir, look very nice to a government that has the interest of Nigerians and lifting the people from you know the dungeon of poverty. But we, it has to start with a political solution. So what do you think going forward? would be your, because I'm trying to, you know, take you out of your your domain now, which is, of course, finance and, you know, you have it. And you're from my state, to be very honest, from my zone, and I'm so proud today. But what do you basically feel would be the political solution? Knowing fully well, you know, what is basically happening now at the political terrain, you know, the dollar party, the PDP, and uh, uh, the APC are no uh possible uh uh remedy to yep. the Nigerian situation what do you think is going to happen put particularly putting a do state in contest because Edo is another uh, agri hub with yep. landmass and fertile ground what do you think is the political solution going right. forward thank you very much all right mr yes. mr Nemeka, you want to take that thank 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 you my brother anybody who is wise who is smart, who is honest, who is not compromised, and who is sincere, will line up and vote Olumide Abata as the governor of Edo State. PDP and APC are the same two leprous hands of a criminal leprous hand, two fingers of a criminal leprous hand. You saw what happened in PDP, how they police their candidates. Of course, APC is a no-go area. APC is the senior python of the baby snake called PDP. Edo people, if they are smart, if they are wise, of course, I know Edo people that have a smart and wise. Don't give that the chief obedient family. They should just go all the way and elect. Only. Of course, if you look into history, 
Olumide Akpata is one of the NMBA president that showed faith with the people. Ask any lawyer in Nigeria. He's one NBA president that aligned with the people, bold, fearless, and all those stuff. And he's somebody I've known for over 20 years as a, one of the partners in Templars. So it's not just that people are high paying me. Somebody I've known way back. I'm an investment banker. I have been involved in a lot of corporate trading in in Nigeria with over about $3 billion. Ulumide is one of the most respected corporate attorneys in the history of Nigeria. And I, I can even put my integrity on the line that Olimide would be one of the best governors Edo State has had. So it's left for them. If they want to continue their slavery with PDP and AP. They are the biggest. They will, if they want to consolidate and make Edo State to be like Abia State to follow up on the P2B's legacy, I had an elect. Ulubi Dakpata is one man who is fearless and who can stand and protect them. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So I, I think that points direction politically, even you know, beyond the industry. All right, quickly, I'm just going, I'm just going to Michael. Michael, then we'll come to Barrister Juliet. Um, good evening. Um, can anybody hear me? Yes, Michael, you have one minute. Oh, all right, thank you very much. Um, um, Mr. Obiora, good evening. God bless you. Um, please permit, permit me to use the word doc on you. That's doctor because um, only someone with a high level of um, education could have this kind of encyclopedic um, knowledge you're giving right now to everybody. God bless you for that. Um, I just want to go straight to the question, not to waste time. Please, I just want to know, are you going to delve into politics someday or one day? Because... Take it or not, Doc, whether we like it or not, we need to get in here before we can put such ideas. Like you said, we have cancer worms in the system. Who doesn't want these things to go? We just want to eat, eat, and eat. Are you going to delve into politics someday and say, okay, this is my idea. I want to go in there and make it a reality. And two, I love the way you've like, said take the North and said things about the North and told us about the honey milk and honey economy the North has. For the South, sorry, if I'm, I'm particularly from I'm Delta State, I know we are based on oil and fish. Um, there's a um, fishery, there's um, the local whatever. Is there any other thing, potential Delta State I can get? Because I, for one, I, I'm interested in this farming thing. I have lands to use. Is there any things like in 30 seconds, can you give me just little knowledge about Delta? Is there any potentials again, apart from the oil and the fishing in Delta State? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. I've actually been part of the political process. I ran for Senate in 2015. They rigged me out. <laughs> I was the deputy governorship candidate under UPP on the platform of the UPP in 2019. They rigged me out. So it's not as if I've not volunteered. I have. I showed two of my properties in Lake Phase One to contest to become deputy governor. They rigged me out in 2013. And 23, I was one of the chiefs of the Obedient Movement in the Imo State. They rigged us out. So. It's not as if we are we've not made efforts, we've not committed our resources and our time. We will keep on, we will not give up. Delta State is one state that is so beautifully blessed by God. And I can tell you, I have made investment all over Nigeria. The only place I made investment in Nigeria that I've actually used my needed maximum benefit for me is in Delta State. Delta State is beyond oil and gas. Delta State is a state just like a do state where you can grow the agro value chain. My advice to you in your state, buy as much land as you can buy. As you buy, make sure you secure your CFO. Fence it. If you fence it, invite my group, Southeast Farm, Sefapco, www.sefapco.com. We will come to your first land, invest in it, develop agro value chain, manage it. That is what we are doing. As I'm talking to you, we have already put in place plan to do about 18,690 hectares and 60 greenhouses in the southeast of Nigeria. As I'm talking to you in, in Ibadan now, I have a team there in just about 20 minutes drive from Ibadan town from Tulip Hotel. We are doing um, 70 plus of land. We are doing greenhouses there. We are doing Cavendish banana and we are doing bear pepper. And you know, if in any part, once you have a, a land first, we will come, 
who raise money will invest there. Exactly. Right, right. So, uh, so, comes in. Uh, so just get your land, first it. Um, so that we can help you contact us. We'll come and put in our greenhouse in your land because I will not invest my cover in an open field. I lost 325 million naira of my investors' money in an open field because the stupid governors have refused to ban open grazing and enforce it. So, inland is not first, count us out, will not be part of it. Let's help Nigeria. God will help us. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Under. Can I ask quite specific? Um, no, please, can I just mm -hmm. add this, please? I hope the plants are not GMOs. <laughs> lie, lie. I don't do. I don't do GMO. I do organic. Say, I told you something. Um, GMOs and the and the and the synthetic are uh, cancerous. I gave you. I told you practically here. Any farm that is not organic fertilizer, I will not be part of it. I want to be hundred and four years like my grandfather. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Very, thank you very much, Mister America. All right. Quickly, let me go straight to Barista Julia. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um much respect to the whole schools than your entire team and much respect to you mr inimika i really appreciate your wealth of wisdom so straight to my question uh please what economic value is residents in the f city that can actually enable the people to appreciate development but my question particularly goes to the resources um with respect to the particular resources of quarry here in the FCT. So what economic development resides here in the FCT for the people? Thank you. That's the question you've been asking yes, young weekend, who is busy playing politics without looking at the enormous potentials and resources in data in uh, across um in for FCT. FCT is a place where you can you know when I see the mountainous the if I actually a quarry granite rich region in Nigeria. If you hand over the FCT to the Chinese, the kind of work they will create there will marvel everybody. They will level most of the mountains there, most of the granite places there, and turn it into a workshop. But unfortunately, in Nigeria, we are saddled with bandits. No apologies, political bandits. You saw the kind of stupid games he's playing. He's in PD, APC. They just want to keep on destabilizing PDP. And people are hating him. And when I see anybody supporting us a week, I see the person as nothing but a criminal, a bandit, a, and a useless person. Because I've never seen such an irresponsible human being in my life before. Abuja and the Abuja Federal Capital Authority are places where you can create wealth. The guy does not care. He's busy playing all manner of Ogoro politics. Sorry, my use of a use of word. But that is the truth. Anybody who is very serious, who is very honest, if you make an honest person, a creative person, if you make me FCC minister, the kind of wealth I will create that will marvel you. But of course, that is not what we have in Nigeria. We already have people who are very high, you know, Gogoro. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> hey. well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. I think the FCC, the FCC is a very rich, a very rich region or a very rich uh, location, actually. Um, if you've done some some search or research as well, you you see it. So thank you very much. And see, see the reason why by Sir Julius was day this thing. Man. Oh God. Anyway, uh, Ambassador Israel, please go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, good evening from my hand. Uh, thank you so much uh, uh, to our guest speaker. I'm just joining the space, so I. I think I listened to Barrister Julius in your question. So, uh, wait a minute, please. I don't know if I can also react, you know, to the topics or just question and answer. Yeah, I mean, just go straight to the question. So we could, I mean, I think our topic for today, I've somehow feed it. Oh, oh, okay. So uh, I just want to be sure what, uh, you know, the question is. Uh, all about because I joined the space now, so but I want to also lend my voice. So I thought we yeah, are, you know, reacting to the topic. And my brother, that means that that means you have to replay the space. So. <laughs> Let's just begin. If you just join, there's no, there's no, there's no. I already passed. Uh, okay, okay, the oh, oh, yeah. okay, oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, ID. Thank you. Uh, 
All right, quickly, I'm just going to go straight to Chief. You don't need to check as if you don't speak now. I say the devil does not want to speak. I want, I want Chief now. Now, now <laughs> you do, on, where, which tree you do under? So I was driving, I was driving on a 295. I say, which kind of trees be this one? I go come up, I go go down, I go come up. Let me just go straight, I beg, before it takes me out again. Good evening. Um, good evening, Mr. Abiyari. I think you go with Mr. O, because every time somebody mothers your name, I'm just like Chai. <laughs> but um, I want to say thank you so much for um, the wisdom you've shared here. Uh, I met you during the Imo State uh, campaign. <laughs> like you said, they rigged us out. Um, you made great policies. But my question, my direct question now is because uh, I have businesses in Nigeria, and even as... even in as much as um, the government of the day is not doing what is right, I would say that the dollar coming down has been a relief for businesses to even thrive. I have friends too in Nigeria that are doing businesses as well. And everybody's just saying, you know, whatever KDB is doing, he should continue to, uh, to do it. Um, I just want to ask, right, is there, I know you answered it in a way because you said, yes, the leader, the leader matters, but is there something else that can be done because I would hate for this dollar to go to two thousand for two thousand dollars. Like I would really hate it. Um, but is there something else that this sector can like tap into? I don't know. Maybe just give them freebies because the truth is like it's it's affecting a lot of Nigerians. Like one day I don't know what's going to happen, but many sectors have have had to crash down. Like, is there any other thing that this Nigeria needs to? Seriously, tap. Okay, well, I'm seeing magic you're that they are doing. But is there something that can? Yeah. Okay, Chief, we lost you, but I think your question is quite clear. You know. Okay. 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 Your question is. I, mean, I think what they are banking on see, is the fact that. Your Your yeah. question is clearly. It, it, I I heard you loud. See, guys, let me tell you. Eh? Um, you see, whether Naira, Naira is 2,000 Naira to $1 or 5,000 Naira to $1 or 10,000 is not the issue. I gave you a very clear example. The Vietnamese dong is 24,000 dong to $1. They deliberately devalue their dong to make their export very, very cheap. And that is why they can export to $365 billion worth of services. And they have a human development index of about 74, 0.74. Go and check it. HGR of Nigeria is about 0.34, I be 3.42. They are far ahead of us. The yuan, the Minbi, is far devalued because the Chinese want to make their exports very, very cheap. It doesn't matter the value of the currency. The issue is what are you producing? I give you a clear example of what we are doing in the Southeast with Abia State and Anambra, part of Anambra State in Oka and part of Enugu State and those and even in the Badon. I give you a typical example. Are you aware? Ask anybody, ask any woman, ask any hotel about the bear pepper. It's a $43 billion market. Americans import about $2 billion despite the fact that they almost produce Three times that amount. The uh, Canadians import about three eighty-seven billion dollar, million dollar worth of the bell. Nigeria actually import about thirty million dollar worth of the bell from South Africa. And to do the bell in Nigeria is simple. Just do greenhouse, even though put mulched and the drip irrigation. And I'm telling you clearly here. That's for that. Call me. I will come and establish a bell pepper greenhouse in your land. I will help you develop it. I will share profits. As I'm talking to you, I am building an app, www.bazaar.com. It's an app where I will cut out the distributors, farm to house. If you go to Airban or ShopRite, a 400 gram of bell pepper is going for 11,000 naira. I am selling it for 800 naira. Which is almost one percent, five percent of what they are selling. I am cutting out everybody. I don't want us importing pepper from South Africa or from Brazil. We are building pepper orchards 
across the southeast and southwest and south of Nigeria. It doesn't matter. A, a, a kg of pepper in Netherlands, in Spain, in Germany is going for two euros, two euros, 50 cents, 50, whatever. So we need to be productive. If Nigeria is productive, we can pay minimum wage of one fifty naira every month and it will not shake us. We are not productive. And if you, can, you keep on waiting for these criminals in power, hunger will kill everybody. Some of us have decided we will not wait for them. Since they refuse to do open ban open grazing, we will face our land and we will do greenhouse and we will reap the benefit. As I'm talking to you, I have over 130 agronomists under the Southeast Farms. I'm recruiting about 300 youth coppers. I encourage people, if you read agronomy, you're a graduate, you're good. In, 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 fill our form, we we'll employ you. Guys, the plan is in the next two years, we will build greenhouses that can raise about $435 million local economy. I have, as I'm talking to you, that I have a guy who was in Prota and Gambos, who was in Gino Food, who was the head of marketing in, 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 in Dangote, Africa. Onyebo Hakletus, go go about him. He's not America scouting the market. We are going to be producing and exporting them to South North America. We are going to be competing with Mexicans and Netherlands. We can't wait for Bala Blue and his group. If you wait for them, you will die. There were four lepers who were in the, at the gate of Samaria. Samaria was so seized that they were selling a, dung, a quarter of a dung of, of a bed for five cents. They said, if we go, go in there, we will die. If we go out, we will die. They went out and they survived. If you wait for this people, you will die. You must survive, and we cannot die with them. Nigeria is a good mind. Yeah. Make up your mind, ignore them, do your thing, and we are doing our thing. The most important is let your integrity be double sure. God help you. I hear the mic. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Unaimeka. Thank you very, very much. I think, guys, I mean, that's uh, actually, it's very fair place to draw the curtain, but... Uh, that's where we'll draw the curtain for today. Apologies to those that are still requesting. Uh, time is really um, of the essence. Apologies to every one of you that, um, that is still requesting. But um, a lot has been said. A lot, a lot has been said. A lot. Uh, for Chief, your question, the simple answer that Mr. Unamika just gave is that, as I the leader, the next solution is consumption to production. So it, I feel like that's also tied to the leader. So it's uh, it's quite a tight place to be in. All right, okay, let me just quickly take Mommy B. I'm, I actually was going to say what you're going to say, but so go ahead. Oh no, I came to I came to sell my ways. Um, yeah, uh, I mean we we've been really treated to a lot of information today. I'm so glad I I listened in, even though I was tired. Anyway, um, those of you who joined us, um, myself, um, one meaning and. Chima Christian on um, the space regarding, you know, um, the constitutional amendments. I know some people, um, you know, have signified their interest. I've put it back on the Jumbotron. So he has done a Google form. So if you want to get involved in that work, I remember it is a very, um, you know, focused piece of work because it has to be in by the 30th, right? But if you are one of those who are interested to be involved, you do, but you don't have time, but you have a little money. His account details are on the Jumbotron, if you see on there. Um, let's get this done. At least, even if, it, even if we don't get all we want, at least we have to show that we tried. And I know for a lot of obedience, that has been a sore point. Whenever people talk about 2027, everybody is like, oh, if we don't fix this, if we don't fix that, okay, opportunity to do so proposals i mean we got so much from the space yesterday but you have to realize that people have to you know be give up time go to somewhere and you know and it's going to be expensive but let's help it out obedience let's take it as our project which once we've started we will see it through to the finish line so that's number one <laughs> number two um, a couple of weeks ago, myself and uh, Malam Jabir started um, the Boho project in Sokoto. Right. Um, as as we started getting the donations in, 50 communities across Amfara, Katsina, um, and Chukuto State, and I think Niger, 
not sure, but I think, right, are requesting for support. So we decided that we would have a water project for the 19 northern states or the core north and the middle belt. Right, so we um, are trying to put in place all the structures that we need to make sure that we're able to keep things on the up and up, i.e. transparent with accountability and high levels of compliance, right? So, but in the meantime, while we're trying to sort all of that out, I put back on a, um, John Mitchell, my post in which I mentioned, um, the, talked about the project, if it is ex, if it is if it is not cash you want to give us, if it is your time or your expertise, please reach out to me in the DM. But to be honest, 50 communities is plenty. So we need your cash. Please do that. And then finally, before before one minute pursues me off here, and finally, Parallel Facts um, has um, opened, invited all Nigerians to take part in the essay writing uh, competition, uh, the Nigeria of my dreams. <laughs> I heard yesterday that some people have been hearing that since they were in primary school. I, I never heard about that before, but I, I, I guess it's interesting. Well, uh, the price, prizes are on the flyers also on the Jumbo Trump, with first prize being 100K, second 50K, and third 25K. Um, the closing date is the 23rd. So if you've not started writing, maybe you should just, you know, find your notebook and start writing. Follow the instructions on the flyer and um, the winners will be announced on Monday 1st, May. So let's get, let's enter, enter, enter. Um, it might very well that we might be able to give more prizes if there are loads of good essays, right? People might get something else, but I'm not promising anything yet. So if you haven't entered yet, hey, and you know you can write, you have like a PhD in words, oh yeah, enter. Yep. You know, show us what you're made of, and thank you. I yield the mic. Oh, commodification of Dinara. I the swear. Nigeria of my dream. I oh, know, right? Father, where are you? This is the time. This is the time for you to come down and strike. Um, and right now for space, I always compose by essay. I never write that. Guy, just the composer. For okay, so I, I have already. I have <laughs> stolen that line. Uh -uh. Um, I shall tell Kayla. <laughs> I shall tell Kayla oh, that we have another sentence. We, we've done two paragraphs now. Another sentence for the beginning of the third paragraph. But like seriously, I mean, it, it's it's it would be interesting to see what people's takes yeah. are, whether we're looking for this utopia or we just really just want the basics. All so right. it'd be it'd be good to see that. So anyway, I yield. All right, thank you very much. And just to add to what Mommy B said, tomorrow we are going to be having GROV on parallel facts. We've said it a lot on this space and. Um, like you said, the truth is that everything, thank you very much, Mr. Obiari. I'll, I'll come to you now as well to just maybe give your final statement. Uh, but everything Mr. Uh, Obiari has said on this piece, you could tell it is tied to leadership. As in, majority of it is tied to leadership, visionary leadership. It is why, um, for me, I, I tell people that the first process to get in Nigeria started is getting, I mean, we can do some makeshift, you know, approach like he's doing now, just do his bit. But you, you can tell a lot of he is you get if you get the right leadership. So which is why, um, you, you know, we've just said, okay, if, you know, Peter B wants to run in 2027, no matter how, you know, crazy the system is, no trust, we don't have any trust, the least we can do is probably try to make it easier for him, you know, by closing some of the loopholes that were taking advantage of this last time. And which is why we're having that conversation of having to help um, propose to the, um, I have a document that we can make reference to whether at any point in time to the National Assembly for things that should be changed, especially because they will called for it, right? So um, that's what Mumbi was talking about earlier. So anyway, you can support that. Like she said, even financially, because uh, the people that have to work with that document, I think they have to take a lot of time. It's, they have to just block out a lot of things this week. So that's a solution, to be honest. So we could not just do cho cho cho. We could show workings. Let's put our blood on this, book. not our little blood. Shot. All right. Uh, let me just quickly take uh, go back to Mr. Enemaker for just his closing statement, and we'll go back. Uh, thank, thank you, my brother Emia Saddam. And I say to anybody who cares to listen, sir, please. And uh, is well meaning Nigeria that is. <laughs> I know you are taking it. Okay. Okay. Quiet. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well meaning. Yes. So, 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 thank you, my brother. Let me. I, I just want to say this. I say to anybody who cares to listen, Peter, 
Gregory Ongubuasi Obi is a better man than 99.99% .99 of us. For those who do not know, I worked for him in 2004-2005. He's somebody I know one on one. He has been very consistent. There are, see, I'm telling you the truth. I I said to Ed, I've, I've, I've been in the industry for 23 years. I have worked under bosses, some of the greatest men in the land. There's none like that guy. You know, some of us, we say our, we are born again. We know Christ. We love God. But I'm being honest with you. If 5% if of people in Nigeria are like that man in terms of prudence, in terms of honesty, in terms of consistency and integrity, this place will have been paradise. Peter is a better man than most of the people that we call bishops and geos in Nigeria, and that is the truth, and we know it. And let us stop deceiving ourselves. Now, we say to ourselves, leadership is the issue. You know, we are very, very easy to blame Yakubu Mahmoud. We say, oh, Yakub Mahmoud promised us he leaked us and blah, blah, blah. Now, I want us to know this. Yakubu Mahmoud is not God, he's not omniscient, he's not omnipresent. Nigeria has 176,264 electoral votes and um, pulling boots. And those pulling boots were manned by four officers the PO, the assistant PO, the RAC tech, and one other person. Then we had 8,809 electoral votes that were manned by ward officers, collection officers. We had 774 electoral officers before we had the professors at the state level. If those 176,264 pulling boot officers had done the right thing and refused to allow their results to be doctored, the bandits in power will not have their way. If the 8,809 electoral officers have refused to change their results on their results sheets, we wouldn't be where we are today. If the state collection officers, the professors and the VCs have refused to do what is wrong, we wouldn't be where we are today. Abia State was at the verge of losing it. At the same time, Abia and Enugu was in contest. Two professors, two VCs. The Enugu guy chickened out and sold out. But the VC of Futo, Professor Nenna Oti Akwa Akuro, even at the alleged inducement of billions of Naira, refused to yield the mic, refused to bend. And today, Ndiabia are reaping the fruits of that woman's resilience and sacrifice. If Nenoti had bent the knee, Abia would have still remained under the yoke and bondage of the criminal elitist establishment group of the PDP. Power belongs to the people. Let us not lose fact of this. If I, Nemeko Abiriri, Emia Saddam, Momo, Pearl, and every other person in Nigeria, a majority of us decide to do what is right and refuse to yield our back as a place where the criminals who place their draft board, they cannot have their way. I say it with every sense of responsibility. No Nigerian is a victim. We are all accomplices. Some people will tell you, oh, poverty is not true. Poverty does not lead a valued man to commit crime. My father gave birth to eight of us, six, six boys and two girls. My father was sacked while we were still in primary school. My father was doing a matter of manual job. But my father left value system in every one of us. Ask anybody from Amagu Ihube, Autonomous Community in Okigwe in Imo State. Our pulling boot is the only place where no elections can be rigged. I and my five siblings, younger boys, we will stand and die than allow anybody. In fact, in our pulling booth, nobody does the rig election there. You can't try it. At a time, even some of my senior cousins who were in PDP were asking us, how come we, they call us witches? Do you know why they call us witches? They say we are poor, yet we refuse to collect money to allow elections to be rigged. In Anambra State, I saw a woman who was very poor who refused 15,000 naira from APC to vote for Abga. 
Poverty is not an excuse to be wicked. Poverty is not an excuse to be reckless. Poverty is not an excuse to be irresponsible. In Babylon, four young men who were not priests or pastors or scribes or professors refused to bend the knee. So while we await and blame the political bandits, the political bandits cannot operate when the people decide to do what is right. I brag it and I say to anybody who cares to listen, I have been in this industry for 23 years and I say it and I beat my chest. Go back to the seven years where I've worked. Go to my employees, go to my employers before I became an entrepreneur. Go to my family, go to my cousins, go to my village, ask about me. Any man who cannot be testified right the way Peter is testified right does not survive, does not supposed to live and live right. And that is the truth. The problem is not Buhari. The problem is not Bala Blue. The problem is not the 469 criminals in the National Assembly. Most of them, there are some, there are very few of them who have refused to rise up against the, the madness in the land. The problem is with us. If I and each and every one of us decide to stand for what is right, this country will become a paradise. That's my final submission. God help us. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. Please, sir, I hope you avail yourself again, uh, because honestly, I think I think um, we'll have to start making this like probably, probably even if it's once every one or two months, I'll have to hit you up, please, because the, 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 the wealth of knowledge here, um, the, the information here, I, I, I dare say, you know, that we have violence space, and I say this is my best violence space, I think I can say this again. It's one of my best violence pieces I've had. Um, the information has just been something else. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, people are reaching out to me in the DM, sir. So I want to ask you this final question before you leave, please. Um, people that have lands, I have people that have ideas that say they have lands and they they want to know how they can get into this agro. So um, I think I'm going to open up a a mini a mini business as a midman. So as a middleman now, I want to know um, how many plots, how many plots can somebody have? Someone, somebody said they has three plots. Is three plots too small or too big, sir? What is the minimum? Let me ask, Adam. A plot of land is 50 feet by 100 feet. A standard greenhouse is 10 meter by 30 meter, which is 60% um, of a plot of land. If you have a plot of land, we can do a greenhouse that can give you a minimum of $15 million every year. Secured. A plot of land? Yes, a plot of land will give you a greenhouse that can give you $15 million every year doing legumes, vegetables, and the, everything. And like I said, you know, there is a problem we have in this country. And that is fidelity and that is trust. This country is not devoid of wealth, but we are very, very unfortunate to have, you know, when you see people, oh, that say Amy, I, I said, let me tell you, you know, <laughs> I, I feel so sorry. See, the truth is, the people we have in National Assembly. They are our brothers, they are our sisters, they are our cousins. You know, I say it. If each and every one of us will stand, there's nobody who is a politician in most that will tell you. Some of them say this is arrogant, he's very full of himself. He's very see, let me tell you, I have regard for you. I have more regard for Pearl. I have more regard for Momo than even the governor of my state. I'm being honest with you. I, in on November 26, 2000 and the, I think 2002, and two, two and two, I was with a governor of the state with some high value people. I didn't greet him. The man said, I, did. I said, why would I greet you? I told him, why would I greet you? Why, why do you want my greeting? People said I, was be, I wasn't being rude. I was just being myself. And that is it. When when you when you call a criminal a criminal to his face, 
My father was like that. My the deputy governor of Imo State from 2007 was my father's classmate, my father's age mate. But when my father saw what he was, my father told him, I don't want you to come to my house. I don't want to come to your house. When you come down, we can sit down and listen as a friend. He was a six foot four man. The day my father died, the whole village cried, the truth has died. You see. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and remember, go and check Dan, Dan, Daniel chapter 3. They were honoring Nebuchadnezzar, they worshiped Nebuchadnezzar. But when it came to model of princip battle of principles, they told him, the other was for them, they called him by, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we will not bow to your God. If we die, we die. The God who we serve, if he does not save us, we will die. And their God saved them. Some of us are not willing to make that sacrifice. And that's why we are where we are. A little whiff of the dollar, we will bow. God help us. I am, you know, people, everybody has his own, has his own um, level of endurance. But I can tell you, I say to anybody who cares to list it, I have nothing to lose. If I die today, I, God has helped me. I've raised three children. Even my 11-year-old daughter knows what is value. I tell you, sometimes when people are attacking me on Facebook, I want to attack back. That was the day. My little girl was reading my, my, my one paragraph. I wanted to reply. The girl said, that stop. I said, what do you mean? He said, I have seen five insults. Remove it. 11-year-old girl. She knows it is not good to abuse. It is not good to insult. In fact, yesterday she was telling me, he said, thank God we did not and adopt this your in fact she told me you have a bad side you you have a temper a, a temper problem thank god we did not inherit this from you 11 year old girl she knows i have a temper issue and of course a nigerian issue i cannot continue to condone the madness i pray god help us the only legacy i want to leave is to raise children who are better than me thank you thank you very much sir thank you god bless you well Nigeria, do you have any parting words no no i'm i'm, I'm good i think i can end up here all right, guys, thank you very much, Mr. Barry. Thank you so much, sir. It's been an amazing, amazing space. Wow. I wish uh, we could not end this space. But, guys, thank you so much for coming out. Tomorrow, um, JRB will be back um, on the Power Fax space. Please join them there. We'll all be there tomorrow. And, yes, my DMs already blowing up. I'm now in the demand for our agro business. If you are a son or a child of a roasted corn, and you have friends, please, uh, please don't come to my DM, please, please. I will not support you, please. We don't, we don't support people that support bad governance, eh? But if you are obedient and you have, uh, you have fenced um, land, you just heard um, doctor himself say it, a plot can earn you 15 million naira per annum. That is good money. If you have more than that, more money, please hit me up my DM. Let's, let me serve as a middleman. Collect my small percentage, and we'll be having business going forward. All right, guys. Thank you so much, my brother, Wemi Nigeria. Thank you, Jimmy, Mommy Bolande. Doctor, thank you so much, sir. It's been an amazing platform. I just have to, re I will replay this space again and again and again because so many things were just, my head was just going boom, 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 boom. boom. I, I can't, I, my brain cannot get all the information I got today or more. <laughs> If I meant to write exams tomorrow, with what you just dropped here, oh, I'll enter the all of my... <laughs> if you know that Sabine's video, where he went to a, with his lawyer, and he said, <laughs> now so my brain the day like this, now my head catch fire. You have loaded us today, sir. Thank you so much. Please, we'll be calling on you again, probably next month. I will try and see how we can make this, even if it's once every month. Update, 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 update. It is important we keep energizing ourselves and, and our base um, as we go forward. Please, to those that could not speak today, you see the, our topics were sweet. Sweet, sweet topics. We don't even talk about them today because something sweeter came on board today. We'll be back hopefully on the violence space on Tuesday next week. God's willing. Um, 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 the val um, the power of facts space will be tomorrow. Don't do not forget that. Don't not miss that space for anything. Thank you to the Violence Space team, cast and crew that have made sure this space is being streamed, streamed live on our YouTube channel, our Facebook, and the radio station. Thank you to all of you that could not speak. Um, please, no vex, just that we can't take all the speakers, and we have gone over one hour, 41 minutes above our time. 
I'll be back next week, and I promise to keep it up with you guys that I could not speak today. All right. Um, thank you, um, Oxil. Oxil Technology. So sorry I could not bring you up. Okui, sorry. All the way from Brazil. I see my brother. Thank you. Uh, Williams, thank you. Um, Gerard. Please, guys, I think going forward, I would love to have whatever you're listening to the violence space from. I think we'll have a space, our next space, just indicate from the comment section so we could understand how far our voices are going. Thank you so much. I see you, Black Mav, Chico Dali, Ibrahim, um, Francis, uh, Mama Wakiri, thank you so much. Pearls, my sister, uh, thank you so much. The real Omezia doctor, thank you. Tommy, Tommy of Canada, you don't update your, your, your status. Thank you, my brother, Big Mark. Uh, my brother, Big Magnific Dude, thank you so much. Real Ever Best, Non Conformist, my guy, thank you so much. Not Abukina Giri. Woman Lida, Lamin, I see my sister. Thank you so much, Omega X. Please, guys, if you're in America also, uh, we are having a committee of friends um, for our sister, Sweet Angel. Please, if you want to, um, Valenzas, I'm, I'm not saying if you want to, Valenzas in America, please reach out to me in the DMs. Um, we are having a committee of friends for our sister, Sweet Angel. We want everybody to come along. Let's support her. Let's be with her at this particular time. Thank you so much. Anka Day Day, my sis, big mommy, thank you so much. Ariwa Chik, Abdurrahman, Abdurrahman, you have over 7 billion hectares of land. I know your DMs, you don't do business, remember, do you don't keep my 10%. That land, I go send bandits to me to come. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, my brother, Dr. Hakena, Honorable Adal, all the Adals in the building, Liberty Champion, my brother, big brother, Sabik, thank you, uh, Mazi. Injenja, thank you to Injenja, always, always on our platform. Thank you so much. God's will for Nigeria, Polonium. Dr. Mary White, Dr. Bankole, Nigerian Senator Gaboni, Justice, Naira Exchange of Obina, Oluwa, Damilari, Olawaski, Jamilu, Sufi, my guy. Thank you so much. JRBPR, Mommy Madonna, longest time, I hope you're good. OCFA, my God, thank you so much. V Rookie, uh, Dr. AI, Dr. Lu, my brother, Mr. Ayomi Daydreams, Napunzel Adowere in the first son, Lamidi, and the P, Tony, Reform, um, Reform Joss, Mr. Waleri, Vinoski, Bombastic, Prince, Sim Card, my God, Duchess of Canada, I see you, Chulo, my brother, Emmanuel Ajali, Mugzi, Michael, Shilo, Johnson, Health is Wealth, Patai, my brother, I saw you chilling with Peter B over the weekend. Thank you so much, Duke of Ife, Ike Zege, Adewuyi, um, Guru Beast, Nibul, Captain, Dr. Talatu, Isimeme, I can't call all your names, Dolapo, Ignite, God bless you all. Thank you guys for always coming out on this platform whenever we call you guys. You guys are always out here. Chief, I see you. Thank you guys. God bless you all. We'll be back same station next week, Tuesday. As we always say, we do this for God and for country and for family, but do not forget tomorrow. Parallel facts with JRV. Good night and stay safe. God bless you all.
la 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 